Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Witcher TTRPG one shot. Uh, the Maiden Surrounded by Butterflies is the name of this one shot. I am super excited to be running my first ever Witcher. I have the book right here, the Witcher tabletop role playing game. Um, and I have an awesome crew with me. I'm going to have them introduce themselves in just a moment. We have all played D&D together in the past. We played a Witcher-inspired D&D game run by Gary, uh, and now uh, I will be running the actual uh, official Witcher tabletop role-playing game for them. Um, this is actually... The music is a bit high. Okay. Let me uh, adjust that before we get move any further. Alright, I've turned the music down a little bit. So let me know, uh, chat, if everything sounds good. So this is the uh, official Witcher TTRPG by Artel Sorian Games. This is my first time running this, and this is actually everybody's first time playing this. Uh, and so before we get into the game itself, I'm going to do a little crash course with everybody on how to yes. use their character sheets in Roll20, because um, this is... Thank you for the raid. Thank you, Nerds with Dice. Uh, we're going to do a little crash course so everybody can learn um, how to play the Witcher TTRPG. So if you're watching in chat too, you can get a little bit of a, a crash course on how to play this game as well. Um, but with that, if you are familiar with this game, um, just bear with us as we're learning some of the mechanics. Uh, this is a little new to all of us, so there might be some things that I mess up or just that it's kind of like a learning curve as we go. Um, so just, yeah, bear with us as we're, as we're learning it a little bit. It's a bit more of a, a complicated system than D&D. &D. And even, like, I've played Cyberpunk Red, which is also uh, our Talsorian. Um, they happen to just make my two favorite games and my two favorite universes, Cyberpunk and The Witcher. Uh, and so <laughs> they, this one is a little bit more, uh, e even more complicated than I would say Cyberpunk Red. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna learn, <laughs> we're gonna learn how to play it. Uh, before we introduce everybody, I wanna do a couple of housekeeping things, um, talk about where all the assets and stuff come from. First of all, the music that you hear that was very loud uh, in the background, I will be doing, uh, we'll have all the music in this is going to be uh, from CD Projekt Red, the official Witcher 3 music, specifically Blood and Wine, because we will be in Toussaint. So all of that uh, music you hear will be from CD Projekt Red. All of the assets that we're using are all, again, also from the uh, Witcher TTRPG core rulebook. Um, and also Gwent art from CD Projekt Red, because a lot of the, the art in this book is also the official Gwent artwork. So that's all the credit for that where credit's due. Um, and then the last thing is a couple of maps. So this map here actually is from Reddit, and I will have a link in the description for where uh, the map maker for this beautiful map of Toussaint is from. Uh, we have a couple of assets from James RPG art, uh, and then also the map that uh, is for the big map that we're going to be using in this game was made by George, uh, Glorious George. So thank you, George, for helping me make a map for this because uh, I was like, I need a map. Can you help? Uh, so yeah, so that's all of the credit for all the assets and everything like that. And I think that's everything for me as far as all the housekeeping stuff goes. So I want to introduce our players. Um, so I'm going to go down the line. And Lucy, since I have you first in the overlay, you're going to go first. Uh, if you can, introduce yourself, who you are, and what you do on the mm -hmm. internet. Uh, introduce your character. You don't have to get into too much detail, but you can just say who they are, uh, maybe where they're <coughs> from or anything like that. And mm -hmm. then uh, third thing, I like to do a fun little icebreaker for all of my one-shots. So my icebreaker for this is what is your Gwent faction of choice when you play Gwent? So, Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Lucy. Uh, my name is Lucy J. Robin on the internet. And um, I am a streamer. I play various different games on Twitch. I've just finished Elden Ring. I'm starting Cyberpunk next week. Um, but I got into The Witcher about two or three years ago and um, have just been in love with everything Witcher ever since. Uh, my character that I'm playing today is a mage, a human mage, and she's called Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> she's called jennifer and uh she is from skellige um so that kind of answers your next question which is what is your favorite gwent faction and the only faction i ever played actually was skellige because they're northern irish i'm northern irish if you haven't guessed already um so i am drawn 
to Skellige. I think the last time we played D&D together, I also was from Skellige. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sticking, I'm sticking to what I know. It's totally, that, I'm fine with that. I always play Squaytail Elf every time. I'm in something, mm. so I feel you. <laughs> okay, next up, Brett. Uh, yeah, Brett, uh, the Fox Bride, usually the online handle. Uh, I've been playing The Witcher for a long time, doing a lot of stuff in The Witcher. Had a solo podcast, turned that into one called On the Path that I host with someone named Lucy who failed I to mention forget. it before. <laughs> I always forget to mention uh, it. Yeah, so we're doing the, we're covering The Witcher 3 at that point. We're almost done doing it. We're going to do Blood Origin. And next week will be our one-year anniversary. And we're going to have a super long Woo! stream, a charity stream on her Twitch. So, uh, yeah, follow everything on there. And I'm playing Ludolf, Ludif, as I'm going to call him, because Ludolf is a bit unwieldy. I shouldn't have put that L in there. A human criminal from Sidaris. And Gwent would be... My favorite is always going to be Scoia'tael, but I have more fun playing Skellige now. Skellige is oh. more fun. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So Skellige. Okay, cool. And next up, Alyssa. Hi guys, um, my name is Alyssa. I'm the host and producer of Breakfast in Beauclair, a global witcher podcast. Um, aside from that, I'm also on the internet at It's an Art Journal, where I do urban sketching around New York City and other places. Tracy has my mug. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is not the Royal Bank of Canada. That's Breakfast in Beauclair. Um, but I, so today I'll be playing, did I cover everything? Yeah, so today I'll be playing um, a human man at arms. Uh, her name is Lavinia, and she comes from Nilfgaard, but joined the Free Company for the Second Nilfgaardian War. So that is Lavinia, and um, she. Or no, I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, so Gwent deck. Um, I feel like it shouldn't come as a surprise after that that I usually play Nilfgaard. Um, I have like, I play Gwent here and there uh, every once in a while, every few months. Um, and I've just always played Nilfgaard, and I don't know how to play any other faction. So mm -hmm. that's that's where I am at the moment. And last but not least, Gary. Oh, hi. Uh, so unlike everybody else, I don't really have a Witcher thing to <laughs> go with. I'm just kind of one of the random plebs within the Hansa who's <laughs> who spent a lot of time being a professional DM. I did that for like a year and a half. So really online, I'm just kind of a guy that tries to get in a lot of D&D games. Um, you know, now that I, I don't have as much time now, now that I'm just a teacher. So, uh, but as for my character, <clears throat> I am playing a dwarf bard named Alston, Alston Alwick. Uh, they're, they're kind of from everywhere. They, they, they don't stay in one place for very long, so they don't really have a home. Uh, and as for my favorite Gwent faction, I don't play the newer Gwent. So the only one I have is the Northern Realms because... There's really nothing else to pick. There's that had all the spies. It was the better, the better game anyway, right, Brett? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hey, I I always play like even in my replays, I always go back and play the the game in game once, even though I've played the newer one because it's just it's just yeah. fun. But I think Nilfgaard is actually the best deck in. <laughs> it, is, it is the game of spies. Yeah, that is true. yeah, it's true. <laughs> Spy abuse, <laughs> which was Beta Gwent too for a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is our cast here. Um, so before we get into the story tonight, we're going to do a quick run through of Roll Twenty and how to quickly learn how to play the Witcher TTRPG. I think most of this game will be a lot of role play, so it'll be standard to D&D where we'll be doing a lot of skill check roles. Um, but let's open up your character sheets, everybody. Um, who am I going to use an example? Let's use let's use Alston. Uh, so, when you open up... Oh, is it, why is it not shown for me? Alright, you know what? Let's try Ludolf. Oh, oh, okay, Ludolf is working for me. Let me know if anybody has any issues with their character sheets loading. Uh, so... You will see all of your stats um, in the top left, uh, which is good to know, but mostly what you'll be using is the skills and modifiers. So you'll see uh, on that first tab there, skills and modifiers. It'll be all of the things uh, you might be familiar with as far as D&D goes, but The Witcher tabletop has a lot more. So I might, you know, if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to Oh, sorry. I realized that when you tab somewhere, I'm gonna. It might tab. I might tab you back. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh. so I, I realized because I have your sheet. Actually, you know what? You can. You, 
do do what you want to do. Actually, I have I have a test sheet here. Um, we're gonna go to Lusker, who is the Witcher that I made uh, as a test. So uh, if like say um, you are trying to uh, talk to somebody um, and flirt with them, I might have you do a seduction roll. Um, and so you just click on the word seduction. Uh, and it should pop up. And you, all of your stats, so you'll see a lot of zeros. Sometimes you just don't have any stats in it. You can roll, you probably won't succeed. But if uh, some things you see you have numbers, like uh, this Witcher I have, Lusker of Hog. Is it, how, how do you pronounce it, Hog? H-A-G-G-E. I always say it wrong. Is it Hag or Hog? I think I, I would like say even it's Hage. Hage? Hage? I always I, no, I think I've... I... I don't know. I think whatever. Okay. It's hog. Hage. Hage. Yeah. Um, anyway. I like hog. 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 Um, <laughs> so he uh, has a lot of athletics, so he probably would do well. Um, or like stealth. He does well with stealth. So you roll that, and he rolled a 31, which is a really high success. Um, so yeah, so that's how you roll for your skills. Uh, so the second thing you'll see on the second tab, profession skills. Uh, each class, uh, each role has different professional skills. So as a witcher, uh, he has something called witcher training. Um, and so if you want to quickly read what it is, like because this is a one shot, I don't think we have to worry too much about y'all skills. Um, if you're playing a longer term campaign, you can actually like level up these skills and get more skills. But I think for this, uh, we might not use these too much. But if you want to quickly read over what your skill is um, and then you uh, if you're like, hey, I, you know, I have richer training, so I can use it. I can read up on monster lore. Like, I know about the lore of this monster, and I'll have you roll that skill, and there you go. We'll see how he, he does. Um, the next thing is gear. Um, I gave you all the standard gear for your classes. Um, he has a silver and steel sword. Uh, his, his, all of his gear is also there. Um, so you can quickly look at any of your gear that you have. Um, again, it's all the standard stuff that you would have for each of your classes. And then magic and spells. This is only Lucy has to really worry about this, um, cause she's the only spellcaster of the group, but you can also see all of your spells and magic spells and you can quickly read over them if you want, um, and what they all do. Uh, you have quite a few spells. This Witcher, for example, has Ard. So if I, if you just want to click on the little flame, uh, we can see exactly what the skill does, or the uh, spell does, and everything like that. Oh um, yeah, okay. So yeah, um, that is a quick run through of the character sheet. Um, once we get into the combat, <sighs> once we get to the combat portion, um, we'll probably get a little more into detail on that. Combat's a little interesting in The Witcher. Um, there's like a lot of steps back and forth. Uh, once we roll initiative. Uh, what I'll have you all do is back on like the skills and modifiers if we click like the witcher has melee attacks for example So if you click on melee, it'll say like fast strikes strong strike you can choose which one you want to do um, it, I have the type of attacks on here honestly For this for the sake of simplicity here. I would probably say a fast or a strong strike are the two that you'd want to do um, and if you just click on that It'll take you through everything. You can just hit submit. Uh, he would use a steel sword, uh, target location random, and we just hit submit and we'll see how, how well you do on the roll. Um, so, thankfully roll 20 does everything for us uh, as far yeah. as like the, the clicking does. And we just, or we'll just see the numbers, we'll roll. And so once the initiative comes, we'll worry a little bit more about that. Um, but yeah. Any any quick questions that anybody has in the meantime? I'm sure we'll have them in tow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. I know it's a it's a quick uh, little crash course, but uh, we'll 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 have fun. That that's that's the goal uh, for everybody when you're playing tabletop games. Like for the longest time, I was too scared to run this, and I was like, you know what? I, like, why am I scared? Just of jump all? in. Like, like, yeah. Let's just have fun. So mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna do tonight. So, without further ado, let us jump into our story tonight. Deep in the heart of Nilfgaard lies a very beautiful location, Toussaint, one of the Empire's many vassal duchies. 
The lifeblood of the land flows in shades of crisp Chardonnay and scarlet rogue. Rouge, I should say. <laughs> Not rogue. I mean, there might be some rogues. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I already messed up. <laughs> Knights in suits of plate armor gallivant about the duchies, gently curving roads like a tipsy fairy tale. Their horses draped in vibrant colors to match all of the riders that you see throughout this land. The four of you, you've been traveling through the continent for quite some time and you've traveled in various traveling groups and you all have different backgrounds that you come from, different sets of skills, but the four of you have been brought together by a letter from an individual who is from Toussaint. Raphael de, de Surman, Ducal, Ca oh my God, this is so hard to pronounce. <laughs> Ducal Camerlingo of the Duchy of Toussaint. Dear God, I'm already butchering all the names. <laughs> and this is what the letter reads. Most honorable and skillful heroes of the continent. I summon you to do a job of most significant importance. One that I would not trust to any lesser to undertake. You are to travel to the town of Fox Hollow and protect my son, Leblanc de Suman. Protect him from harm or unfortunate incident while on his nightly quest to rescue a maiden from a monster known to hold her in the high highest floor of Roger's Tower, due north of the village. Keep watch over him and remain mindful that the greatest danger to his safety is likely the Witch of Lynx Crag, just east of the village. Do this, and on his return triumphant, you will have made a benefactor at one of the most generous treasuries in the great empire of Nilfgaard. I have seen to it that your lodgings have been taken care of at the Ready Brush Auberge, as have your travel expenses. When you arrive at the inn, write to inform me of the present state of my son's quest. If my son has perished, I ask that you avenge his death on behalf of our family and complete his quest so that he may rest. So that's the letter you all receive and you make your, your ways um, down to the lovely Toussaint. You hope that this quest will fill your pockets with lots of florins, as they say in Nilfgaard, but many of you have crowns, so you'll have to find a way to convert those. <laughs> but after traveling northwest along a road, you pass several picturesque vineyards and you arrive in Fox Hollow. Looks a little bit like this. Make sure that works. And that is where our adventure begins. So the four of you begin to arrive at this location. And you come near this nice little charming tavern, the Ruddy Brush Auberge. Fox Hollow, by the way, it's a very charming village. There's lots of buildings painted blue, white, red, occasionally green. They have like colors everywhere. It's just such a picturesque location. There's a crystal clear stream that runs across the center of town. And there is a, uh, a winery that you do pass also called the Bushy Tail. Um, but for now, here's it where you are at the Ready Brush Auberge. Um, who, I'm gonna say as you all arrive, I'd like you to describe what your characters look like arriving from this. Where And where are you coming from? I assume, so I think Lavina might be the only one who is from Nilfgaard, might be, you know, local to the area. But I assume many of you are traveling from the north. So where did you travel from, and what does your character look like as they arrive? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Um, so Jennifer has traveled 
far from Skellige to take upon this adventure and uh, task. So I think she would be wrapped up really warm and she would be arriving at the pub kind of getting too hot and bothered taking off all her fur coats and layers like god damn it's hot here. <laughs> <laughs> what about Ludolf? What does he look like? Well, I would say it looks like what I'm wearing now. But yeah, he's kind of a weary traveler. As he is coming from Sidaris, it again is a long road there. Sidaris is very far north up there. And same thing is the weather. If the weather's bad, then he's just trying to stay warm. Actually, what is the weather like? In Toussaint, or it's probably sunny. It's probably, okay. it might be a little humid. Um, but it's, you know, it's a nice summer day. So it's like... It's humid, okay. sunny, and pretty then, outside. Then he's sweating his ass off, and as he gets in, he definitely <laughs> pulls down, pulls down the top there. Are we? And we're describing what they do in there. And when yeah, you get in there, yeah. What happens the, when you walk yeah. in the tavern? Getting in there, kind of eyes around, takes a second look at that Skelligan mage. He's always had a soft spot for the Islanders, <laughs> and kind of just goes up again to the bar, casing the place out and judging the clientele. Okay. What about Lavina? Uh, so Lavinia will probably Lavinia. be coming from the north. Um, as I said, she's part of the Free Company, so she's spent many, uh, much, much time in the Northern Kingdoms. Um, but she's ridden in, hopped off, lightweight armor. She's back home, and she just kind of comes clinking into the tavern. Um, and uh, yeah, she. I think she gets settled. Feels, you know, a little at at home, but you know, this is. This is, she's coming from a war where she played on the opposite side. So still a little on edge, um, but very much kind of seeking out opportunities, uh, familiar faces, that sort of thing. Okay. And then Alston. Yeah, so Alston is wearing rather plain, uh, but nice looking clothes. Uh, probably hasn't got a new pair of clothes in a while, uh, but uh, they're pretty thin, pretty well worn. Uh, he only has a backpack uh, and a dagger at his side. Uh, his hair is all put up in a bun. He's got a man bun going on. He's yes. Got a dwarf, dwarf, and he's also got a dwarf bun going on, which is he's taken his beard and wrapped it up. To Amazing. Bun <laughs> um, uh, he uh, he doesn't really know where he got this letter from, so he's just here to, eh, let's go. Let's let's it's a job. Let's let's figure out what's going on. So when he he enters the bar, he's like. Right, it's a nice place. He's gonna immediately go find something to drink and sit down. Yes, and the four of you, maybe Lavinia the least, but the four of you do look a little out of place in this tavern. <laughs> as most of the people here look a little upper class, they're dressed very nicely in lots of uh, like garb that's colorful. Um, a lot of people are drinking these very beautiful uh, lavish wines. So as you all sit down and kind of maybe awkwardly eye each other, some of you getting drinks, you see, uh, let me just change the music a little bit here. Let's see. Um, let's see some tavern music. So, tavern music. So you uh, all see a, uh, so actually this is what the tavern looks like. So you see this, you're sitting in this tavern and you see a woman um, approach you all. Uh, and she kind of tries to gather you all together, um, the four of you, and she says, oh, you are the travelers, I assume. Uh, well, please forgive me. It, f forgive me for assuming, but you all look like you are from out of town. Uh, your rooms are set for the duration of your stay and I will extend a discount on food. Uh, perhaps you, all look like you might be strangers, so uh, maybe you should introduce yourselves to each other. My name is Josephine. I am the proprietor of this lovely establishment. Uh, Lavinia will step forward and just introduce herself as Lavinia. Um, and yeah, have a parental guardian accent a little bit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just uh, say it's a pleasure to be here. And she looks smilingly at the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh... oh, Hello, Josephine. Her name's Ludif. Um, be 100% honest. I got this letter from 
the ba bazaars in Sidaris. So uh, Ooh, I hope that's nice. all right. And again, did you? I don't know. Did you introduce that I missed that? Alyssa, did you introduce yourself? Yeah, I yes. did. Okay. Well, fuck me then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's L Levina, uh, Ludif, and the others, yes. I think Jennifer would just step forward and sort of sheepishly shake everyone's hand and introduce herself. And um, she's quite keen to get her room sorted because it's been a long journey and I need to freshen up. Yes, indeed. You all come from so far. And what about you? She looks at the dwarf. I'm, I'm not really sure why I'm here. But I'll take it. Uh, yeah, I'm normally... I, I mean, I normally work in groups of people, but... Not, uh, he, kinda, he, he looks over at uh, Ludov. He's like... Well, yeah, I, I work with people. Sure. <laughs> Do you, you know a dwarf named Thorin from Sidaris? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right. So you all are from very far, it seems. Uh, yes, you must be. You must be weary on your travels. Um, uh, if you, uh, if you would please let the, uh, the Ducal know that. Um, I offered you good stay and good discount, uh, and that you did make it here safely, I would very much appreciate it. Uh, your rooms are upstairs, of course, um, but, you know, if you want some food, drink, we have, uh, we have everything you need here, just as the Prophet Lebioda intended. Uh, and I'll have uh, my fellow uh, patrons here take your bags upstairs to your rooms. And uh, she hands you all a menu, actually. Um, feel free, anything. It's at a discounted price. Uh, we only take uh, Nilfgaardian Florence here, of course. <laughs> you all have crowns. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Do I have actually, any Actually, yes, you would have Florence, yes. Okay. <laughs> Is there a, a transfer around here? Oh, we do have a currency exchange. Um, What's the rate? Uh, I actually do have this. Um, shoot, I did have this. It's somewhere in the book. I was like, oh, good, they have an exchange rate. Uh, I'm going to say it's two to one. Oof. Like the... <laughs> that, that the Levena, <laughs> Levena, you, you think we can work something out here? A little more... Two... two would it be... What's Why more, don't... What makes it more expensive for the Nilf Guardian Florid? So it would be two... Florins for one crown or one crown for two florins. I'm really bad at conversion rates and shit. So if we have if we have crowns, we would want more florins, right? So we would want two two florins for one crown. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's what we would like. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what year are we working with? Uh so the timeline, as far as like the Witcher goes, I don't know what the year is, but it's this basically takes place between The Witcher two and three. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm scanning thing. Ah, uh, that fucking war. These inflation rates. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tart. A fish tart for thirteen <laughs> florins. Levena, can can we walk something out here, please? Why don't why don't I get dinner and then we can all exchange our currency tomorrow? Oh, that's a lovely idea. A great Thank idea. You. Thank you. Great idea. Thank you. How much do I have on me, Tracy? Um, you have. <laughs> do I have enough for dinner for four? Um, let me double check uh, your sheet. I did. I did put uh, a certain. Oh wait, this is Jennifer. Uh, let me just check really quick. Uh, the man at arms might not have that much money. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you have 80 crowns. Or 80 florins, okay. I should say. 80 florins. Okay. Oh, where do we see that? Um, so we go I, character sheet. Uh, yeah, gear and inventory. Um, I did give you all uh, money. So on the right side, you'll see currency. Um, it should be oh, yeah. there. 50 crowns. Okay. Okay. And this is lunch or dinner? 
Um, you guys probably arrive around lunchtime. It's still pretty early okay. in the day. Okay. So, so the... go ahead. Beggar scan be choosers. Let's get two ratatouilles <laughs> and, <laughs> and a bag no. out with fish fat. <laughs> I will say, from hearing so many travelers, that the Est Est is renowned, and I don't see it on the menu here. Would there be? Wait, is, is a waiter or wench here? <laughs> Josephine. <laughs> Josephine. Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought she left. So uh, I thought she gave us. She. Uh, I thought, she, well, she, she did. Gave us the menu. But a waiter. Okay, a waitress. Okay, okay. A waitress. Okay. <laughs> Not a wench. Well, we'll approach. Year year twelve sixty nine waitress. Not a wench because we're not in the north. <laughs> is is there any bottles of S S in the back? S S. Um. Well, we do. We may have some, but it might be a little more pricey. Uh, that's why we don't have it on the menu. Um, I know down south in Beauclair, they have a lot more. Um, uh, we we only have some of the uh, the closer vin vineyard wines here, but I mean, we do we do have some. It just might be a little more expensive. Well. Lavinia is gonna lean over and say, "You can trade us to SS tomorrow when you exchange your currency." <laughs> Okay, I was gonna buy a bottle here, but I like that better. My whole twenty-five crowns, twelve florins. <laughs> Get like a drop of Estes. <laughs> Just a straffle. <laughs> a shot. There you go. Anything else? To be I clear, can... my coughs are not being picked up, right? Nope. Yeah. Okay, good. Anything else I can get any of you? Um, More wine, perhaps? Did we say that we're just sharing some... Um, some ratatouille. Did you say, what, what are we sharing food-wise? Some ratatouille and baguette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going I'm, light. <laughs> yeah, light lunch. Um, can we have a glass of wine with lunch? I feel like we deserve it after our long travels. This is Toussaint, after all. It is Toussaint. Um, I'll go for the, the cheapest one since it is your treat. And we'll go. Is this for is this for the bottle? Is this for the bottle um, or is this a glass? Uh, <laughs> if you have to ask. Uh, it here. would be it would be a glass. Oh god. Maybe That's I'll so just expensive. have a, a top water then. <laughs> it's a tall glass. I mean they give you a pretty hefty serving of We of could wine. get four straws. <laughs> <laughs> One glass of wine to share. <laughs> Austin, do can I tell that there is you? Is you a bard? Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a bard. But I've always heard, I've heard this story and this rat, rat tattooy. I don't know about old, ratatouille four. Well, there's this old folk tale of this rat that always made this ratatouille. I was wondering. If you knew a tale or a song, you could regale us with. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not a singer. Ah, sorry about it. Right. I don't. Uh, I don't. I wasn't the singer. In our, no, uh, no in tales. Our and you whip up a good yarn over dinner <laughs> or supper. No, I usually just pick up things. Like, on the floor. Yeah. Well. Ah. I heard in the right kitchens on. of Beauclair Palace, there was a rat that used to make ratatouille, as you said. Wow, with yes. With one of the chefs. <laughs> did you, did rat. you actually remember like the tail, <laughs> like the story? The, the tail goes on the end of the rat. That's where the tail <laughs> oh, goes. Oh, right, yes. right, here we go. <laughs> okay, that shut him up. <laughs> so a gentleman uh, approaches you, Ludolf, and he says, I couldn't help but over, I need I need to get my French accents. I couldn't help but over here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is so hard. I couldn't help but over here that uh, you might be a little short on on Florins. Always. If if by short you mean none. Yes. Well, you look like somebody who might be a uh, a gamer of choice. Perhaps a bit ah. of dice poker. <laughs> or Gwent? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll say a little bit there. Poker. I, I lost my Gwent deck. Ah. On the route here, but yes, uh, some dice poker. Dice poker it is then. Uh, sure. How about we do a wager? Um, I only have I only have some crowns. 
if that'll do. Hmm. Well, the current... Apparently the weight is two to one. Uh, yes. So. Yes. But it... All right, you know what? We will do this. We will do the crowns. Um, All right. And, <laughs> and he, uh, he pulls out a cup with some dice, and he says, So, how about some dice poker, then? I will wager 50. All right, well, since we're using our own dice, can I use mine? <laughs> but of course. All right. All right. So I pull out mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So roll me. Um, actually, does the, the your dice set? Uh, let me just check really quick. Yeah, it's a it's a loaded dice. Grant a moderate plus three. A plus three. Okay. Yeah. So roll me a d10. If you look on the left um, little bar there, you'll see like the little d20 dice symbol. That'll pull up. Oh, I see it, I see it. Yeah, so then you'll see D10. Gotcha. If you just click that. Uh, and then I just add a plus three to it? Yes. All right. So five, Ooh. All right. An eight. Oh. Oh, uh -huh. so you win the first round, but we are doing a best of three. <laughs> 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 oh, ho, ho, ho. That, that wasn't the rules. You didn't say that. It's oh, true. but <laughs> dice poker is always a best of three. Just like Gwent. Yeah, what? Well, since I'm in a good mood. Wait, can I check that as somebody who's from Nilfgaard? Is that like a Actually, house rule? Yes. Or... Um, roll me. Uh, it's I'll under, call this man out. Under your intelligence uh, stats, roll me a. Roll me a streetwise. I know that's the street. The streetwise of Nilfgaard. <laughs> Is this my cue? Uh, the Aladdin. <laughs> So it should be under your intelligence. Yeah, I see yeah. it. Um, and what am I rolling with this? Uh, so just click just on it standard. and it should, yeah, it should okay. be standard. Haha, <laughs> a seven. <laughs> Can I roll that as well? Yes. I gotta be wise. All yes. Right. Roll me. Okay. Alston, you Damn. know that you might think, yeah, they're Ooh. like sometimes people play best, but that's usually called beforehand. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it, this does seem a little, a little strange. You know what? I'm, I'm feeling in a good mood. Let's do it. I'm a guest. It's all right. Let's cool. go. Okay, so roll yourself another d10. Clackety clack. Daddy brings some luck. Ooh! Ooh nice. That's some sweet action. Foot. Well, I guess I won't say that. Okay, my friend. <laughs> all right, best of three. Well, it is all yours then. Cheers, mate. Cheers. And he hands you 50, uh, 50 florins. Um, just one second. Well, it should have been reversed, right? Because if it was my, t I only have 25 crowns. So it should be like 12 florins. <laughs> hey, thanks, well, thanks, for, thanks for being so oh, honest, oh, Brett. Uh, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Hold up. I was not in character. <laughs> I was honestly trying hmm. to like not game the system. Um, how about we, this? He okay. No. Like I legit whatever. I legit this... meant that for like you. I didn't want to. Like, this I guy's... would not have said that obviously in character. This guy's a little lost in the uh, in the Toussaint wine. Okay. Um, he's been having a good okay. time tonight, which is why he just didn't care to wager all of his money. He gives you twenty five because he assumes that that's what the conversion rate is. He gives you twenty five. Florence. How does how is this guy dressed? He's dressed pretty nicely. He looks like he okay. might be a uh, some sort of okay. yeah upper class. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Cheers, mate. Cheers. So you have a little bit of cash. You you the ratatouille uh, eventually arrives at the table. Uh, you get two four ounces ratatouilles and a baguette. Uh, with cheese, uh, some fancy cheese, um, and you get one glass of red tail rouge <laughs> wine <laughs> to the table. Four straws. Yeah. Four straws. <laughs> the waitress looks at you all strangely, um, but uh, yeah, she brings you your food. 
can all get my newfound wealth? <laughs> is there any way we can all get a glass of something? What about this red that does not have a price next to it? Oh, oh that's just red and white. That's, Never mind. Yes. That's a <laughs> I'm an idiot. Excuse me. Just red. <laughs> uh, oh, how about this? How about your well spirits on oh. the house for me? Whatever well go around. I will take. What if Lavina? What is Lavinia. the best spirit? Lavin <laughs> See, I knew it was Lavinia, and she kept saying I Lavina. Yeah, it was, I messed up. <laughs> and you didn't it's, correct her, and I was like, oh, it must be Lavinia. I, I, okay. I messed up. It's Lavinia. <laughs> okay. uh, L Lavinia, you seem to have a good knowledge around here. What was your mm -hmm. spirit of choice? Spirit of choice. Out of character, this is a very good question for me. Um, <laughs> let's get... Uh, let's get some... Let's get some whiskeys. Oh, yes. On the rocks or mixed with anything? Dealer's choice. Hmm. Why, why in God's name would you mix it with anything? <laughs> I will take, I will take. <laughs> On the rock. <laughs> two, two drops of your finest, clearest water. And that's in character and out of character. <laughs> but um, wait, how, how much are they? How much are they? Well, um, if one of you wants to roll me persuasion um, under empathy, um, I would hope is a criminal. <clears throat> and empathy. and oh, if no. you you all seem charming, but let's see how charming you out of towners are. Um, and that they might offer you a discount. I don't know about persuasion, but I I got a pretty high seduction score. Well, <laughs> <laughs> roll a persuasion on her sexuality. <laughs> if you give her a little wink, she might. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think all NPCs are by your pan. That's the yes, one, right? this is true. Yeah. <laughs> In go. my world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to roll whatever, and you could see what, whatever you argue think you might be best, she might be able to give you a discount. Look, I, I think, you know, we've had a good time so far. We ought to get something, you know, a little, a little, uh, a little better discount off, you know. I'll roll it. Okay, go Ooh, ahead. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, wow. So, well, oh my goodness. <laughs> you are here to help our dear knight LeBlanc de Suman, of course. So, our new heroes, I think it'd be worth at least giving you a round on the house. Woo! And uh, she grabs whiskey on the rocks um, and brings it back to the table and a sample of a one of the white wines, the Duke Nicholas Chardonnay. Well, thank you so much. And one question real quick, and I slide like one of the florins over to her, uh, that bloke over there, and the person I just beat, uh, you know him? Know anything about him? Oh, he, uh, he is, uh, he is from Boucler Palace. Uh, he is a very noble man. He likes to travel around to even such a small place, such as this, such as Fox Hollow. Uh, he likes to uh, try to do gambling and make make a little extra for his free time. Right, right. Thank you. Maybe you should have asked him about the rat that lives in the Beauclair Palace. <laughs> Uh, yeah, perhaps that. Uh, is is the uh, server still there? Uh, yes. Okay. Cheers, love. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. So you all have some food, drink. You feel pretty good. Everything's really tasty. Like obviously, the wine is like ten out of ten. Um, the whiskey's pretty good as well. Uh, the ratatouille is tasty. Um, and you all just kind of get yourselves comfortable in this, uh, in this little tavern. Um, again, all the folks, some people do make kind of weird eye glances at you all, but, uh, nobody, like, nobody looks angry, nobody looks hostile. Um, everybody here is pretty pleasant and friendly. Um, what would you all like to do now that you've kind of settled in a bit? 
I informed the table that I used loaded dice to beat that guy. <laughs> FYI, y'all. I appreciate the honesty with the group. If we're going to be working together on whatever this mission is, if you're going to be doing things like that, I'm glad you're telling us about it. He don't need it. Nope. Yeah. And coin is coin. And we've all got whiskey yeah. now. <laughs> <sighs> well, I think we're... Should we send a letter to to our benefactor then? Let him know we're here? Yeah, that's yeah nice. is that going to be the easiest way to get in touch with him? Um, well, he told us to... Uh, well, write to him to inform him of the present state of his son's quest. So, maybe we should find out what has happened to him or where we can find his son. Le Blanc. Good grief. <clears throat> All right. Good idea. So, uh, oh. Jennifer, you have a, a set of letter and paper. Oh, I do. And um, I have a writing kit. So if you want to take the time to write to Raphael, the um, father of this LeBlanc, who you all are searching for, mm -hmm. um, you you have the time to do that. You can write whatever it is you want to let him know of. Okay. Do Before I write this in, in here anywhere or just... You can just write it here at the tavern if you guys want to go to your rooms upstairs, wherever you feel comfortable. Well, we don't know anything about LeBlanc yet. Should we ask around the tavern? Yes, that's yeah, a definitely. very good idea. You know what? If if that guy's from Beauclair, I'll go. I'll go ask him about him. If that guy's still there, uh, I will go ask him about. The yes, Kindling he though. is. But it looks like he is um, playing more dice poker with another patron. Okay. Um, I will. If he's drinking something, I will buy the cheapest version of whatever he's drinking. <laughs> And go wait until he's done, and while the rest of y'all are going around, I'll wait to ask him what he knows. Okay. I'll get a moment from him. <clears throat> okay. Um, could I speak to Josephine, or could we speak to Josephine? Yeah. So, uh, let's start with that as Ludolf is waiting. Um, Lavinia, you approach Josephine, um, the propri proprietor of this establishment. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, so Lavinia will switch to Nilfgaardian mm -hmm. <laughs> to Elder Siege. And um, she's going to just ask, like, oh, well, so we're here on behalf of Raphael. Do you happen to know anything about uh, LeBlanc? Have you seen him lately? Uh, what can you tell us about him? Oh, LeBlanc. Uh, he is well. He is a very a, a nice boy. Um, but I think... He might be a little uh, in over his head sometimes. Um, he was trying to impress, impress a young maiden. And, uh, well, I haven't seen him in quite a few days, now that I think about it. He does often come to this tavern. He mm -hmm. also likes to frequent one of the other wineries. But... What's the name of the winery? It is called... The, uh, what is it called? Um, it is the... The Bushy Tail is what it is called. <laughs> Adjective and a uh, noun. <laughs> and an animal. Hey, Alyssa, why are you going? My favorite kind of, my favorite kind of uh, tavern. Um, right. So he often goes to the Bushy Tail. And uh, do you know where he went the last time he was here? Well, he did say he was going on a noble journey to rescue his maiden. Mm. At the... The Rogers Tower. Yeah, we've heard of it. North of the city? Yes. Uh, I... Nobody I know, at least nobody around here, goes near that tower, so... Why not? It is just very old and abandoned, and... It's not very sightly for the town, also. It's... Really, it should be demolished, but... Hmm. It still exists. Good to know. So this is um, where we're going. We're we're supposed to be almost chaperoning LeBlanc to this tower, right? To find yeah. his his maiden. 
Although it sounds like he left without us, so. It does sound a bit like he's already started off on his journey. I wonder when he left. Did you say you haven't seen him in a few days? It's been a few days, yes. Hmm, interesting. So, <laughs> I mean, we could check the bushy tail or we can go straight to Roger's tower when we're done here. But... I'm just rereading this letter. I'm sure I haven't missed mm -hmm. anything. Ludolf, while they contemplate what the next move is, you see this uh, Boclarian noble and um, he's playing dice poker with this this merchant, it looks like, because he has some wares, like he wears a cloak and has a bunch of wares. Um, he looks kind of like, he doesn't look like he's dressed as nicely and, and as noble looking as a lot of the other people here. He kind of just looks like a humble merchant uh, that he's playing with. And you see that the merchant actually wins also um, and takes more money from this rich drunk man. And uh, he he looks to you. Can I? Oh, you are you back for round two? Oh uh, no, just I was wondering here, and I hand him the drink. Oh, thank you, my friends. Yeah. So I was wondering, the Duco Camelango, his name slips me. I've had a few as well. Raphael. Oh yes. Raphael. Yes. Uh, do you know anything about him? Anything about dealings? Ah, well, uh, he is, well, he is a very noble man. He is, does very well with, uh, the Emperor, uh, so, uh, he's just a very well-known man, as far as I know. I've never met him, but... Oh, okay. Pays very well, well from what I hear. Okay, you look, well, just as important as well. Uh, how, how's the look treating you? Outside well, of that one. Uh, well, I seem to be, uh, not having the best of luck, and this is not normal for me. I usually, uh... I usually win quite a bit at all these smaller taverns. That's where all of the, the good games are. All right. Well, it and I look towards the person you just played. Well, would you like a rematch with him? Oh, a rematch. What about you? You seem to be a little bit better than me. Perhaps you play on my behalf. Well, I, I tell you what. I got some lucky dice. Why don't you use my dice? Oh, lucky dice. They were blessed by blessed. a prophet of Lebioda. Oh, Lebioda. You yes. know, uh, we, uh, oh, okay. Well, um, perhaps then, actually, roll me, roll me, I, I don't know if we want to do charisma or deceit. Like you, maybe deceit. I'm legit trying to help him. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to help him. Okay. I'm trying um, to get his good stuff. Maybe persuasion, just because, okay. And he's actually, like, this, sto this tale of being blessed by Lebiota, I mean, let's see. He's he drunk. <laughs> Can I get advantage? Yes, yes. And he's, yeah. Okay. Does this, um, you said it was empathy? Uh, yes. Under your empathy, you, you could roll persuasion if you, if you want to feel that. Okay. I don't, is it like, where am I missing it? Where are these at? Are these under, oh, are they skills? Oh, there it is. Wait. Persuasion. I see it. I see yep. it. Oh, damn. I do have good persuasion. I got an eight. Okay. Uh, no additional mods, right? Correct. Okay. What'd I get? What'd I get? Um, well, you rolled a fail. Um, a crit fail. Which... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. A zero. God damn. Which um, isn't good. Um, because he's not that drunk. But this guy didn't roll well, uh, also. Um, but he, oh, I don't, people don't normally get dice blessed. Is there something else going on here? No, all right, all right. I'll be on the up and up with you. They right. weren't blessed. I found them on the road. Raw after a nobleman had left. They were lost, if you will. I didn't want to ask questions, so. Well, they might not have been blessed by Leviota. They are from a noble or highborn. I see. And I just like show them and they look very like exquisite. As you're showing these to him, the merchant actually gets up and he looks at you. Well, I, and this man, he doesn't have any sort of Nilfgaardian or Toussaint accent. 
I've seen your type. These dice, sir, and he looks to the noble, you might want to uh, be careful of this one. He might have tried to swindle you. The man looks swindled. <laughs> no, no, all right, all right. Yes. Where, where's this person from? Uh, he just looks person? like a merchant. Okay, but, but he's you're not, not from sure. here? Uh, not from he, here? De he does not look he's, like he's from here, no. A traveling okay. merchant. Now I'm trying to deceive. <laughs> well, all, right. all right, here's another thing. I'm from Sidaris, if you can't tell by my accent. He's from <laughs> Velen, right next door. Always in Larkus, Seaside Bazaar. They've always been war and King Foltest. That utter cunt. Just like that. He hasn't locked King Ethan. They've got a little bit on there. He's just trying to do that. All right. I see what it is. It's all in the up and up. Okay. Now I would like. Roll, now I'm roll to your deceit. Okay. Let's this is a goddamn can... nine. <laughs> <laughs> see if you could talk yourself out of this. All right. Yeah. Oh, wait. So... Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the nobleman um, looks at you and looks at the merchant and all right well you know what i think i think i've had enough as far as games go tonight he looks a little uneasy after all of this and uh, you thank you for the drink good sir and enjoy the rest of your time here in toussaint i say cheers and slink away <laughs> <laughs> i go back to the group and find out what's uh, happened as you slink um, away, actually, very quickly, the merchant. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the merchant, he does say, as you're kind of walking into the shadows, he's, he's a little ominous, this gentleman. He says, well, if you are going to that tower, and you're looking at him like, how does he know about the tower? I stopped I would, mid stride. I would be careful yeah. if I were you. Uh, it's known to be very dangerous there. and. Perhaps a curse laid upon it. All right, I wave him over to a secluded spot where it's just us. Ooh. Oh, she no. <laughs> he, sits, he sits back down at the booth. Um... Seduction room. <laughs> I pull out my chloroform. No. <laughs> Not yet. I was about to. <laughs> if that deceit roll failed, the chloroform. Okay, anyway. All right, so did you say we're like, yes? Secluded? You guys uh, go to a, a a booth that is more private. Okay. Um, I will say that even though I might have to roll for sets, fine because I worked at that bazaar up in there. I can see that he's a merchant. I can see what he's got on it. So I'm like, do business. I see a business thing here, which is good because mm -hmm. it's like a ten. If mm -hmm. I have to do that, uh, let me know. But I'm saying, all right, I see you a merchant. I've worked the bazaars, a little bit under the table. You got me. You got me on that. My dice. I just, I open up to him. And I'm like, okay. What was it you mean? It is quite all right, friend. I didn't mean any sort of hostility. You and I, we could be friends. This, uh... I wave over like a drink. I buy him. I pull a drink over. Hmm. But he... we don't talk when the person's there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 sir, the, the, sir, oh my god, the, the waitress <laughs> brings drinks, <laughs> the waitress brings drinks and walks away and, um, he takes a sip and he says, well, the tower, Roger's tower, it, uh, from what I hear, might be cursed. Yeah, a witch or something. Yes, the witch of Lynx Crag. She, uh... She's an interesting one, that one. But I almost wonder if maybe it was something else, that she's the front for it, and maybe there's something deeper there. Okay. Seems too what the cookie cutter. A witch cursed the tower. The knight goes to save the maiden. Yeah, yeah, the stories. I had two songs, the knights, mm -hmm. nice errands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've had some of them come through upon my word. That's all they would say. Yeah, yeah, it gets old a bit. All right, so um, how how did you come about this knowledge? It don't sound like you're from here. I am not indeed. I travel many places, and this one in particular has caught my eye, and I've been observing for some time. All right, well... 
I'm not the best memory here. Would you mind coming to meet my friends? I call them friends, really more my colleagues, just to let you know, but would you mind coming meet with them, telling them this information? Perhaps, yes. All right. I and will lead him, like from behind, kind of the side. I don't want him okay. <laughs> ducking out on me. <laughs> Uh, and right. well, I'll take him to the group. You make Assuming your way. Assuming I know where the group is. E yeah, you see them at the bar. They have okay. been talking oh, to okay. the tavern owner. Uh, Alston, yeah. are you with them as well, or have you been doing anything else? No, I've been with them. Okay, so the three of you right. have been. Yeah, yeah, are at the. You kind of are at the front of the bar. All right, and I I explain what he just told me and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. we just heard. Hmm. I, I think we need more information about this witch. Yeah. I'm a bit concerned about the witch. Josephine, anything? Oh, the witch of Lynx Crag. She is a, she is an interesting one. She keeps to herself. Uh, we don't, nobody here really associates with her much. What's, what's been said about her? Well, she, she keeps strange pets with her. She has panthers oh. and nobody really goes near there her she has a hut it is not far from here and anybody who approaches the hut usually they become panther meat <laughs> so we try not to we try not to go there many of there are rumors spread all of, around the northern area of Toussaint about her have you heard anything about the curse on the tower I've not heard anything no we just call it a creepy old abandoned tower. We do not know anything of a curse. Other than, well, there has been talk of curses going around, but I'm not too familiar with it. Hmm. I sidle up next to Lavinia and I whisper and kind of like pull her back, kind of whisper. Should, should we tell her about this letter? about this night, what you think? She already knows. Oh, this is love. Oh, this is the fucking, God damn it. Josephine? Yeah. Yeah, I thought we were talking, never, fuck me. I thought we were talking <laughs> to somebody else. Never mind. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, is I think the, in any case, <clears throat> oh, Gary, were you gonna say something? Is the witch a uh, human or an elf? She seems human, but I do not know. Um, Jennifer, have you heard of her before? I haven't heard of this witch, no. I don't, there's not many mages in Skellige, and I, I sort of travel alone, so I don't really know a massive network of other mages. Mm. But she's definitely not somebody I've heard of. Interesting. Well, I guess we have a few options then. We could either go visit this supposed witch, we could try going to the Bushy Tail if to find out more about um, LeBlanc, or we can go straight to the tower. I feel like we should go to the Bushy Tail, mm. find out some more information, then write the letter to Raphael. Okay. Okay. I noticed as well that I have some invisible ink in case we need to write any encrypted messages. Mm -hmm. mm. So, anything that you all want to do um, before you head out and head toward the bushy tail? I think I'm good for the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. What time of day is this? Um, it is mid-afternoon now. You guys have been here for about an hour, hour and a half or so. Um, it's still midday though. How far is it to the bushy tail? It's probably only like a five, ten minute journey. Okay. The small town. All right, so you all make your way to a, uh, a winery um, called the Bushy Tail. And this is what it looks like. Um, so let me just pull this up really quick. Uh, as you do, it, it's a very, like, lively 
little winery. It actually looks nicer than the tavern you all were in. Um, there are Ooh. there are very colorful patrons there. You see one woman with a foxtail, uh, <laughs> and you uh, see lots of people drinking wine. People are having fun. Um, it's a very uh, it's a very like welcoming, but kind of like. I don't want to say seductive atmosphere, but just like everybody seems to just be really having a good time here. <laughs> I think I'm, I need oh. another drink if we're going to be here. <laughs> uh, might be uh, my kind of winery. Hey, Austin, Austin, right, right. Yeah, uh, what do you think about Lavinia's that? ready to go. <laughs> you, think you think she's taken? Fox all over, fox tail, yeah. yeah. Think she's the fox bride? Yeah. <laughs> Out of character. I appreciate all the fox stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is all. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, that was not planned. By the way, uh, everybody in chat, this uh, particular adventure is from the Book of Tales from uh, our Talsorian games. It's a supplemental book of a bunch of different adventures. Um, and this one is, yeah, is the, the Maiden Surrounded by Butterflies. So this is actually uh, one that you can run for your players as well. Um, so Lavinia is going to take a look around, um, on business, but kind of for pleasure <laughs> as well, but she's going to have a bit, bit of a look-see. Um, is there like a, an owner here or somebody behind the bar or somebody around serving? Yes. So there is a man, a gentleman, um, who is serving wine to this lovely fox lady. Uh, he is well-dressed and, um, you... Um, yeah, so you see them, uh, at the, at the front of the bar. Hmm. Um, are any of the patrons here, do any of them look particularly out of place? They don't, uh, well, actually, roll me, um, roll me awareness. An awareness roll. Hey, okay. Lavinia's got an eight too? awareness. Can can I do it too? Nineteen. Yes. Awareness. Anybody who's looking around. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll me awareness. So that would be skills. Oh, oh I have ten awareness. So do I? I don't put anything in this input value. Correct. You just uh, okay. Yeah. Hit submit. Ooh, we're seeing everything. Okay. Oh shit. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, awesome, just chilling, or <laughs> no? I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find oh, okay. way. It's uh, it should be it's under intelligence. First, under yeah. intelligence. Yeah, yeah. I know, there's so there's so many skills. <laughs> also, Great. just am... soaking in. Yeah, the... also, <laughs> he's vibing. He is not aware. Um... I'm thinking about the woman with the fox tail. Yeah. <laughs> thirteen. Well, thirteen is definitely it. He is. Ooh. So, um, you. Jennifer, you're the first yeah. to notice. Actually, you notice that the gentleman with the foxtail sitting uh, in one of the booths, uh, he looks like he's from Skellige, actually. Um, the way oh, you this hear... man with the... Yes. He looks like he has a fur around him. Yes, yes. Um, he is dressed in... It looks like he actually has some Skelligan furs, but the minute you hear his accent, um, you know that he's from, uh, from the Isles. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Uh, Ludolf and Lavinia, you notice um, some of these other patrons with uh, the the girl. Um, she's actually a half elf, um, and you uh, you also notice the man who's laying on the the lap of this woman. He looks like he might be in the medical profession. Um, he looks like he might be a doctor. Uh, but he looks like he's off duty right now. <laughs> but yeah, so but nobody looks out of place. Um, everybody looks like they're having a good time. Um, one of the patrons talks to this girl with the, the bushy tail, and uh, they look like they're talking very uh, flirtily. Flirtily? They're, they look like they're flirting. Flirtatiously. Flirtatiously, thank you. <laughs> Um, I think Maybe Jennifer would approach this Galaga man straight away. 
just out of curiosity more than anything. Well, hello there. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> as, as, wait, I have to give us uh, a Skelligan accent. Well, hello there. Yeah, you have to be shouting yeah. and angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello, you look like you're from Skellig. I recognize your furs. What are you doing all the way down here? Well, uh, I could say the same about you. Um, uh, my name is Bjorn. It is great to meet you. I, uh, well, I, I live and work here. Uh, I work on certain business. Uh, and he gives a, 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 a sly smile. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I see. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's it's nice to be far away from home in such a such a unique land as Toussaint. Yeah, it's nice to have someone meet someone from home being so far away as well. I think yes. she would ask if she if he knows anything about LeBlanc. Oh, LeBlanc, he he comes here often. Um, I haven't seen him in quite a few days, but he is a nice gentleman, uh, very, very uh, chivalrous. Uh, but I've never really seen he him here with a woman before, which is interesting. Uh, but very nice. Very nice gentleman. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think I want would want to tell this man about the letter or anything, or why we're here just yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I think she would probably just continue having a drink and just talking for a wee while whilst the others talk to... Did somebody go to speak to the barman? Uh... I, I would. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, you approach the barman. He says, oh, greetings. Uh, my name is Armand. It is a uh, welcome to the bushy tail. Oh, hi, Armand. Um, how's business lately? Oh, business has been doing quite well. Uh, we have had a uh, steady but good amount of patrons here and there. Um, are, mm. you, uh, are you looking for a drink? We have all of the um, finest wines here. I, I trust you do. Uh, looking for a person, actually. Have you seen uh, LeBlanc uh, anytime, at any oh. point recently? I hear he frequents. Yes, LeBlanc, my, oh, I love him very dearly. Uh, he is like a son to me, um, but not actually. I don't tell Raphael that. Um, <laughs> he, I have not seen him here in quite a few days, uh, but he does frequent here. Um, a very nice young gentleman. Hmm. Did he did he happen to say where he was going the last time? Um, Raphael was interested. He did talk about his nightly quest, as many of the knights here do. But hmm. that is about all I knew. Okay. Is there anyone else here who would who was friends with uh, LeBlanc? Well, he's been friendly with just about everybody. And he looks around the the bar. Nobody in particular here, I would say. Hmm. Okay. And you all, like, kind of get kind of the same story from everybody, I would say, as, you know, if you ask any of the other patrons, a lot of people say the same thing. He's a very noble knight, just like many of the others of Toussaint. He said he was going on his nightly journey. Um... But that nobody has seen him in quite a few days. I'd like to mm. ask about the witch. Mm, the witch. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Well, the witch. If you ask the if you ask the proprietor, he would. Yeah, yeah he would tell you. She is. Uh, she, he would tell you a similar story that she is uh, no good for this town. She does not take kindly to rude strangers. She has been known to not shower. And uh, I've never really seen her leave her little hut. Outside, is there, any, far, is there anything she preferences, any likes? Hmm. Say if we were going to meet her, any gift? Hmm. Well, what is it things that witches usually like? Do they like herbs and concoctions, perhaps? Do you, does, any, does anybody have any of that? Here in Toussaint, we like to just give people wine. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'll ask if anybody actually has any of that in their inventory. Mm. Mainly, 
Uh, Jennifer. I have a flask of spirits, which contains triple distilled dwarven spirits. And I also have a vial of something called succubus breath, but I think that is more like a potion type thing. So any of these herbs anywhere around here to procure some of them? Well, if you go look around town, perhaps you can find some randomly on the, on the street, just like at The Witcher 3, <laughs> as you're yeah. going, going around, you can pick some out on the, on the streets. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, maybe you could uh, spot them a little more easily. I think I might be able to. All right, let, I think. Should, um, should, we, should we go grab some? Would it, would it, is it worth asking Bjorn if he knows anything about the witch, or is it just the same sort of story? He has the same story. He speaks <clears throat> more like open minded about her. Um, like she might be just misunderstood. Uh, everybody here says bad things, but nobody's actually really met her. Um, yeah. So yeah, he he no, but he doesn't really know a lot about her either. But he thinks more highly of her than everybody else. <laughs> So it could all what just about? be gossip and rumors, mm -hmm. for all we know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be curious if the doctor happened to, you know, has come across anybody who has interacted with the witch before. Um. So you approach the doctor, um, who is super drunk. Um, <laughs> his name is, uh, he says, hello, uh, my lady. My name is Valentine. Can I... How can I be of service to you? Um, <laughs> uh, Lavinia is just saying, well, I don't want to interrupt your evening, um, but I was just curious. Uh, we've we're here on a bit of a on a bit of a journey, um, and we've been looking for LeBlanc, but who you might you might know, and um, we were just I was just so curious if you happen to to know of anyone um, who's interacted with uh, the witch of Link's Crag in your profession. Hmm. The witch. I, well, no. I, I've i not known of anybody who's really interacted with her. He kind of gives a similar story as well, that mm. she is just like a hag isolated in her little hut and doesn't leave. He has seen people, he has treated people though, who have been mauled by a panther. Uh, huh. uh, <laughs> there we go. That's nice. So yes, the but not everywhere. impacted by magic. Nobody impacted by magic. Purely panther ballings. Correct. <laughs> okay. Do they? They usually. Do they often live? Yes, they usually live. Uh, we've had mm. one unfortunate. Uh, casualty from a panther wound, but I usually, if they come to me within the first few hours, I usually am able to treat them, and they are healed very quickly. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think we've gotten everything that we mm -hmm. could possibly get out of this man. <laughs> Unless you guys have anything else <laughs> you want to ask him. I don't think so. If he's super drunk, he probably won't be much use. He goes back to laying on this lady's lap and kind of starts <laughs> to nap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the dream. <laughs> that sounds like a good afternoon. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the afternoon still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, All right, should we uh, get some herbs? Maybe go visit that witch. If we visit the witch, there's a chance we'll never leave. <laughs> Just... If we all get mauled by panthers. <laughs> oh, we got like, four of us. You like you can handle that? Are you holding a sword, Lavinia? <laughs> you have a sword. Uh, you have a rapier. Okay. Yeah. You look like you handle that rapier. We got a mage. We got uh, Austin over here. He <laughs> a stout, stout of heart. No. Can we, write, we, we need to write our um, letter as we well. Do, yeah, we just write our letter. Uh, panthers are slightly less predictable than men, though. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> it's a good challenge. Uh, yes, to so the letter. Uh, Jennifer, did you want to write that? Yes. So 
What did he want us to say in it? He just said how his son's quest is going and if he's dead, uh, please avenge him. <laughs> okay, so we don't really know how his son's quest is going at the moment. We just know that he's likely started off on the journey. And, and nobody's seen him for three days. <laughs> how how far away is the tower? I know it's north of here, but... Uh, not too far, actually. Uh, again, it's um, probably like a 10 minute journey from here. Oh. oh okay, so he shouldn't be <laughs> gone for three days. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. do, we, do we know where the witch's like, hut is? East her, of here. Yes, her hut like, is like, east. Like we, we could find it if we wanted to? Yeah, it like, probably... Do know its location? Yeah, okay. this is a small town, so it probably wouldn't take long to find it. Is it like 10 minutes that way? Probably, yes. <laughs> Okay. Everything, everything's within pretty close proximity here in Fox Hollow. Okay. We could wonder... split up, do a little scouting. Mm. You want to scout with tower? I feel like if the tower was cursed, it's cursed because that witch. So if we don't handle the witch, we probably can't handle the tower. Oh, I don't know what to do. The witch might not have yeah. anything to do with it. The witch might not. might not have anything to do with it. I mean, watch. it wouldn't be. We're gonna need power. a pound of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Lavinia's gonna meat. look at you and say, "You look like a pound of meat." <laughs> nope, I don't want to be a pound of meat. I'm gonna need a slab of meat. Um, I need to go to a butcher shop. Can we afford a pound of meat? <laughs> Hopefully. You might be able to get meat. Um, I would say it would probably be like. 30 florins. It's pretty expensive here. They would be willing to <laughs> offer you a discount for t of 20 florins for a pound of meat. I pull if out there's at least one crowns. panther. <laughs> we only have crowns still. I, have, crowns. I, I have, have whatever florins left over after buying those drinks. I had 25. And I bought those drinks. You offering those? What's the meat for? Is it to distract the panthers? You got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Just meat. All right. Uh, Armand does hear you all talking about crowns, and he does offer a currency exchange here at the winery. So oh, maybe we should sort this yeah. out. Yeah. Does it feel too long? All in. You exchange all of your crowns for florins. All 70. Well, I guess I can only do 74. Because I have 75 crowns. Okay. Yeah, so you can. I have a yep. hundred crowns, so I, I, I I'm, I'm not gonna need my crowns, am I? Yeah, you might not. You're here, so when in yeah, when yeah. in Nilfgaard, mine as well. Exchange. Have florins. Yeah. Okay, let's exchange mine for a florins, also, please. Okay. So he hands you the the exchange rate, the two to one, for uh, Nilfgaardian florins. I got 37 florins. And there's we nothing we can meat. do to get a better to get a better exchange rate. Is there no persuading a better exchange rate? If you want to try to persuade him, he might be inclined. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I have a, a good per, actually I have zero I persuasion. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to look to you, Jennifer, and say bewitch him. <laughs> Bewitch him. <laughs> use my magic for evil. I didn't say you had to use magic. <laughs> oh, seduction. Oh, this feels like I'm selling myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? Could we use, could we roll for seduction to get money? Just, just a little, if, if you want to flirt a little. A little flirting. A little okay, flirt, flirt, he might be inclined. So should I, do I press that? Yes, the seduction. Okay. What? 25. Okay. That's good, right? Yeah, he seems uh, very inclined to give you a good rate. Okay, uh, yeah, she flutters the eyelashes, many, yes, all the good stuff. We don't stuff, get many pretty you know? mages in town. So uh, <laughs> he, will, uh, he will exchange evenly the crowns for Florins. Ooh. Generous. Yeah. It's very generous. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I look over the info. Oh, you, you need a room. <laughs> no, we've got a we've got a job to do. 
Oh, right, all right, all right. So, what the plan is? <sighs> I guess it makes sense. I guess we can scout the... We can scout the witch if we want. Um, I think we should make our way to the tower at some point. What, what about that slab of meat? All right, all right, I already wrote that I paid it. <laughs> it what? sounds like we have it, so we might as well use it before we wander into the tower with a slab of raw meat. <laughs> we, got, we got room for it. I just knew a lion tamer once, and it was, it's what he would do. <laughs> Although, I feel like there's a couple of ways this can go if we were to strategize. Either we go to the witch's place, her panthers attack us, and then we kill them. We're going to have a very unhappy witch in our hands. Yeah. These pets we've killed. If we distract them, I don't know how far a pound of meat is going to take us with those panthers. So if we can get a hold of her, maybe. But I don't know how, I don't know how long they'll be distracted for all of us. Jennifer, you have any incapacitation spells? Let's have a look at spells. Okay. So, I have a spell that will cast 10 illusory, illusionary copies of me. So there will be 10 Ooh. like a up to mirage. 10. Yeah, you roll a d10. To 10. And, oh, okay. Yeah, it'll say how many you get so they are intangible but indistinguishable from the caster and controlled by the caster's mind so that could be a good distraction for the panthers i guess um other ones i mean other ones are like fire that would be like killing them which as um as you said lavinia might not leave the witch too happy if we kill all of her panthers. <laughs> so yeah, I think the only the only spell that we sh we could probably use would be there's also fog. There's fog. Oh. Fog might be a good one. So creates an area with a ten meter radius centered on me with thick fog, and it imposes awareness penalty. Are we going to have to hold hands as we walk through the fog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a few options there. But, okay, say we do that. Then one of us just makes a break for the shack and assume she's in there. Um. Well, if we do that, I'm probably not the best person to go reason with a witch, so... I could probably sneak in there, know my way around a trap or two. Mm -hmm. As it says, practice to paranoia here. <laughs> uh, so what we think, either that or check out the tower. I'm up for whatever. Okay. You could make your way. So the way the route is, there isn't a, a trail that goes east, um, like straight east. So you could go off trail right to the witch or you could go north up the trail and it kind of passes the tower and then it kind of veers east and then you take that down to the witch. Um, mm. So you could pass the tower on the way and then make your way to the witch. Just like scout it and then head yeah. to the witch. I think that sounds like a good idea. I'm right. game for that. There could also possibly be a monster at the tower, right? <laughs> it says there's a monster that's known to hold the maiden in the tower. Someone said it was cursed. So it could we be could possible. scout. Oh. We could scout, try scouting from a distance and see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, disembodied voice. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you guys, um, any last things? Any last things that you want? So, did you guys get the meat for the pound of meat? Is that something? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Alston, you hold on to the pound of meat. Um, and any other <laughs> preparations or things you want to do here at the winery before you head out? Um, I'm, te I'm tempted to ask the doctor if he has any remedies for whatever's in the tower, if he knows <laughs> anything we could find along the way, but he might be too drunk. Uh, he will, since if you mention that you're trying to, or like looking for LeBlanc, he will hand you some, um, healing 
herbs. Um, Ooh, okay. Just for your travels. Oh, yeah, we should definitely take those. Nice. And uh, just in case I'm feeling paranoid, I want to slip my loaded dice into my secret pocket. <laughs> just in case that comes back to bite me in the ass. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, we're coming. <laughs> yeah. Out here. So like, wait a minute. Yes, uh, the the criminal puts uh, has a secret pocket uh, in his inventory, so he puts the loaded dice in there. Um, and yeah, you all make your way out of the bushy tail, uh, back into the beautiful uh, paths of uh, Toussaint and make your way north past the tower. And I think we will take a break there before we get to the next port of our adventure. So everybody uh, in chat, we're gonna take a quick 10 minute break, bathroom break, grab drinks, grab snacks, um, and we will see you all in about 10 minutes. BRB.
Hello, everybody. We return. Walking. So, the four of our crew here make their way north. Uh, north uh, in Fox Hollow. And they travel along the path to a tower. And you see this tower, it's very, it's actually more circular than this image, um, but it is a tall tower. Um, it does look like it stands out a bit from the rest of the colorful Toussaint. It's old, it's, um, it has like lots of vines and stuff growing from the sides and it looks a little ominous, but you kind of look at it from a distance as you're traveling ar along the path. Uh, there is something that you do see, however, as you're looking at the tower, and this is something you all see. You don't even need to really roll like any sort of perception for this. You see somebody. Ooh. As you're looking. It looks like somebody at the side of the tower. They're laying there. And actually, all of you roll me now a perception check as you look closer. Where is that one? Um, it should be... Human perception? Is that it? Actually, as I'm not, we're not playing D&D. &D. Um, <laughs> we... That's the human perception under empathy. Wilderness survival? <laughs> Like, what are we? Um, maybe, j actually, just do awareness. I okay. would say just awareness for this. Um, could yeah. I do a wilderness survival check to see if there are any yes. tracks that have led to this? Yeah. I also have that perceived paranoia, which says when, as I stall for time and remember where to click it, perceived paranoia, um, if I come within 10 meters of a trap, this excludes experimental traps, manded arms, booby traps, and ambushes, I immediately make a practice paranoia roll. Okay. Either the DC to spot the trap or ambushing party stealth roll, or DC set by the GM. Okay. If I don't, even if I don't succeed in spotting it, I'm still aware that something is wrong. You can roll that as well to see if you uh -oh. spot any traps. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, so as, as a man at arms i have a man at arms i have some sort of like bloodhound thing like the bounty hunter bloodhounds yes. i'm like would i do that or the wilderness survival stuff try the blood do roll the bloodhound skill damn okay. jennifer see what happens i am oh. super aware Ooh. okay because i got yeah i got a 14 in the wilderness survival but a 20 a 21 in awareness but yeah, I wasn't really sure what everything is. By the way, for everybody watching um, in the Witcher tabletop, um, if you roll a crit fail, which would be a one, or a uh, crit success, which would be a 10 on the die, because uh, it's mostly, this system mostly uses D10s, um, it's, they call it exploding. So you're, you're supposed to roll again, and then that's what your total is. Um, I, for my, for my, for the sake of ease for this, I just, if you roll a fail, you roll a fail. If you roll a crit, you roll a quit, crit, um, and you get that kind of success. So just, just an FYI for everybody. Um, but with all of these rolls, so we have a 27 from Jennifer, 20 from Ludolf, uh, 21 of the wilderness, or that's awareness, uh, 14 wilderness. Um, and then the practice printer, we have a 16. Okay. So... <laughs> Ludolf, you don't see any signs of traps or anything, which is good. Um, Lavinia, you are not really sure how this happened, but you all spot it um, with your, your awareness. You see a knight uh, unconscious on the ground at the foot of the tower. Is he Look at his gold armor. His lovely gold armor. Dang. Oh, you um, said he's unconscious, right? So yeah, he looks alive? Like he's out. He looks like he's out. Yeah. Is he having a bit of lie down or is he like dead dead? <laughs> Do you have you, to go up to see? You could see wounds on him, but it's hard to see from this distance if he's dead or what's, what's the deal. 
Is there anything from a distance that we could... I know we could probably assume it's LeBlanc, but is there anything from a distance we could see to confirm whether it's him, whether that's like heraldry or anything on him? Mm, with your awareness rolls, yes. You are able to see the, the crest on his his armor. It does look like it ends the description that you've gotten thus far. It looks like it could be LeBlanc. Okay. Is there any like movement in the tower above? I know there are supposed to be a maid in here. Anything that we could see? Um... With your wilderness survival, you you don't see anything at the tower, no. And yeah, you don't see any traps. You just see an unconscious man. Well, I feel uh, like we should go approach. get him. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think we need to see okay. what's happened. We can't we can't just walk past. We have to go and see if he's <laughs> okay. Oh, there he is. Write the letter. He's dead. <laughs> so, um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, who wants... Uh, so who wants to approach, like... So all of you are approaching. Does anybody want to check him out? See how I'll, he's well, I mean, yes. if I already check for traps or anything suspicious, mm -hmm. that's already covered. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go as well. Okay. So, Lavinia, you uh, walk up to him. It does look <clears> like, uh, just from a quick look, checking his pulse, he is still alive. He just looks very <sighs> injured. Um, if anybody wants to take a closer look and see what the injuries are, you can roll a physique check to see what might... Kind of I will do has. that because mine is yeah. really high. Okay, okay, I have, I have zero. I have, so. I have a 13 there. Oh, okay. So this is about... 31. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 27. Dang. Okay, so you both notice this. <laughs> he has three visible critical wounds. He has a concussion, a fractured leg, and a cracked jaw. Whew. But he's alive. He's alive. They look untreated. But he's alive. Um, well, I'm not sure healing herbs are going to help this. <laughs> <laughs> but is there actually, is there anything I could do to at least set it, it, like how conscious like is he completely out or he is completely out okay um i feel like the best thing to do would be to get him like <laughs> to just get him stable right um if we can yes um if you want to try you can roll a first aid how's everybody's first aid <laughs> mine's surprisingly um, bad for being garbage. Where is it? Where at? is it? Under craft. Craft. Oh. First aid is a zero for me. Zero. Okay. Oh no. Okay. I wish All right. In. I'm like, do I have do I have anything like in my gear that's useful? Crafting tools, crossbow bolts, flint and steel, grappling hook, rope. I have alcohol. <laughs> okay. It's all good. We drunk. can <laughs> for <laughs> for him to drink or to pour. <laughs> be it could be like used to clean a wound purpose. all right oh. let's uh, let's see if i break this man Phew, okay nine <laughs> break. God. so oh, you, tr you try your best to try to stabilize him but he is out cold okay um is there is there anything we could deduce about what he encountered based on his wounds um roll me I would say roll me a, um, I guess another, I think with the physique rolls that you rolled earlier, you can tell it looks like he was like cut up <coughs> by something. Oh, okay. He didn't have the meat. <laughs> meat. What happens? But if it was the Panthers, there would be like bite it, wounds yeah it and doesn't stuff. look like panther oh. it doesn't look like any sort of animal wounds oh no okay. i'm not hungry okay. <laughs> um I, I mean we're only like 10 minutes away right should we take him back to the doctor the drunk doctor <laughs> it's only been like <laughs> half an hour There's, yeah oh. the doctor or the witch maybe if you dare take that risk 
Mm. We're going to have a he- very heavy body in armor and panthers. <laughs> this sounds like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> <laughs> or we can listen to the omniscient voice and go to the witch. <laughs> whichever, <laughs> to the witch. Y- whichever you choose. He's resting. We ought to check this place out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or can we at least him. get him far enough away? Like, You could. Um, if you all band together... Um, to try to lift him up. He has heavy armor, but with a couple of folks, uh, you you are able to kind of pull him away and pull him yeah, safely away. So we're gonna leave him somewhere else instead of here. Is that what the crack is? Or do we bring him I with don't know us? What to do with him? Well, now it's gonna. I mean. I'm assuming none of us took horses, like if it was a 10 minute walk. So, what are we going to do with them? Carry him the whole way? (laughs) So, are there no. the like footprints, markings? Um, you did see footprints leading to the front of the tower. um, Okay. Into the entrance. I will go check. I, I, I'll say you also see footprints that go around, like, to one of the windows. Um, yeah, that's what you see. Okay. So he he got attacked out here. Obviously wasn't even in the tower. Let's, let's check around his footprints and the front door. All right, I'll go check uh, out the front door. Okay. So I'm f- with So you guys go to the front door, um, and it is massive. It has, like, this reinforced stone... Um, and you don't see, like, hinges or, like, a door lock, like, anywhere, like, to open it. Like, Damn. it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, and then you see... These doors. You see something kind of weird. It's kind of, like, there's little cracks and stuff um, around the tower, and you see... It looks like hair? Lots of long black hair coming from all of the cracks. Oh. Um, is Jennifer here? Jennifer, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. So, Jennifer, is this is this look okay on magic? Some kind of trick you may know? I don't know. It's nothing like it's I've funny. ever seen before. I do have... Um, I don't think any of my spells are really suitable for this. I don't want to... No, this is more combat things. I touch the door. You touch the door. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. It just, okay. it's a very hefty, like, big uh, door with no sort of hinges for opening. Um, are there any other openings on the, on the tower? You see lots of windows. They're they're small, like little slit windows, but they do look big enough to fit a person. They're just, like one person at a time, um, and that's where you see the tracks. It looks like there's tracks that go to one of the windows, and actually, as you look up, there is a window right above where <laughs> the knight is unconscious. Um, so it looks mm. like maybe he tried to climb the window and fell out. Mm. But he was cut. Hmm. And as, as you're looking up at the window, you see more of that hair. But this time, it moves, and it kind of recoils into the back into the tower from the window. Oh, creepy. <laughs> that is horrible. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, throw down your long hair. <laughs> on your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Gothel is the witch. I bet this is. I bet it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We can't metagame that. Uh, <laughs> I was literally like, well, we, we, we need to go talk to the witch, Mother Gothel. Um, um, okay. Uh, how high was that window? I got it. I'll throw you into the window. Well, <laughs> how about so, we stand on your shoulders? And no, you? no, it was the thing I used to do throw people up. Oh. Oh. How about that be plan B? <laughs> and then plan A, I just take a little peek. The tower in its entirety is about 20 meters tall. By the way, 
uh, in the in the Witcher, in the our Talsorian uses meters for everything, what the and fuck's a as meter an American, <laughs> it, I'm like I don't know. So I actually made a note. I made a sticky mm -hmm. note on my thing because I'm like it's one like... meter equals three feet. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is a kilometer? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, wait. I, it, it, oh, you just made it one meter equals three feet. Well, that's that's the actual conversion. Um, it's, uh, one well, meter is about three that, feet. Yeah, but yeah, so, a yard... Okay. <laughs> so well, a it, yard is three feet, right? I just want to make sure I have this right. A yard, a yard and a meter feet. are almost the same, yeah. They're, yes. Like, yes. A yard is like... Three, a meter is like a yard and... Because I'm just used to using feet, because yeah. okay. in D&D, they use feet. Yeah. So yeah. I get confused. Um, but... No meters. No it's, Celsius. Yeah. So, but our <laughs> Talsorian uses meters for everything, um, which is, you know, uh, for us Americans is, is hard. Um, but the <laughs> tower is 20 meters tall, and the first window that you see, the one that's like, it looks like it's broken and where the hair recoiled in, that's about 10 meters from the ground. Oh, shit. Oh, we're not taking a peek through there easily I then. Uh, Dwarf, I don't think you can throw me up that far. Uh, maybe back in my prime. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like you, you could, it's like it does look like there are areas where you could. It looks like he attempted to climb. He didn't have any sort of uh, grappling Ooh. hook or anything like that. Um, I do. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, uh, you have a hook. Yeah, he, I have a he attempted to climb but fell. It looks like. Yeah. Okay. I have crossbow bolts, grappling hook, rope, a signal horn. Ha ha. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do so you fancy going for a climb? Uh, I I can I can get someone set up for a climb. <laughs> I don't think that may be the best idea. It seems like clearly a cursed tower. We need to say something to maybe get in the door. Any ideas? Hmm. I think we need to speak with the witch to think to find out stuff about the curse. Yeah. If she's cursed, yes. All right. Um, shall we lug this bloke back to town? Might, might as well. <laughs> I feel like we might as well. Yeah, right. he seemed to have a lot of friends at the Bushy Tail, so we could probably leave him there safely. It's four of us. Does he one have on like? Yeah. Does he have like not like a favor, but something that we could take with us, just in case we need to negotiate with anybody? Um. He does have a small uh, inside. You you investigate his little uh, satchel. He has a what looks like a butterfly engraved in like a little clear case kind of thing. Ooh, it's like a blue pretty. butterfly. Yeah. Okay. Can we can we take that? Yes, you can take it. Um, so do you guys want to bring him back to town? Or... Yeah, I think we need to leave him at the, the bushy tail. Okay. I, I, if you do, I'll say it's not like... You have to carry him and it's a little heavy, but you are able to bring him to town if you want. It's not... Um, it's... Even though he's uncautious, it won't be that difficult. Um, okay. So... You grab him um, and bring him to town, uh, back to the tavern, or the bushy tail, the winery. And the doctor is still there, he's uh, napping, but um, you wake him up and he does see, he, li he likes LeBlanc, so he immediately wants to uh, help him out. Um, so he begins to stabilize him and he actually asks you all to come back to a back room with him um, as he, he says he's able to stabilize him fairly quickly. Um, and he, uh, once he does, um, it takes probably like 20 minutes or so. LeBlanc actually does wake up. Ooh. Um, and you see this man. The art for this is always kind of interesting. This is in the book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is him. <laughs> this is him from the book. Um, hey now. He's beautiful. LeBlanc de, S de Simon. Um, and he wakes up and he formally introduces himself. He says, I am Leblanc de Simon, knight errant in the service of her grace and the duchy. Uh, I am most honorably in your debt. You all saved me, did you not? 
that we did. That we did. did. Yes, we did save you. <laughs> Can you tell us what we saved you from? <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm unsure. I, I thought I was dead um, from my injuries. I was aiming to defeat the monster that was lurking in the tower. She's, he is holding my maiden, surrounded by butterflies. He's holding her hostage. I'm trying to win her hand. Could you tell us about this monster? Well... Well, let me just tell you the story of what happened from the beginning, because it was quite a bit of an ordeal. So... The front door that I was one, when I went to approach it, it was choked with all of this hair, so I couldn't get in. I did learn of a possible trapdoor entrance. Uh, it is on the caves underneath, so... Uh, but unfortunately, I found it infested with Indriga, so I did not go that way. So, I instead resolved to try to climb the tower. And... That is where I tried to climb to the third floor, and as you can see, I was unsuccessful. There was a great black tentacle of wiry hair, and as soon as I climbed it, whipped me from the tower's peak and struck me back to the earth with force. Uh, I couldn't really get much of more of a glimpse of this monster, uh, but the prophet Lebioda said you all to me, and I could very greatly use your help. My father, he will absolutely look kindly upon you for your act of chivalry. Do you know anything about the origin of this monster? Well, I do know it was a great and terrible evil. And in truth, I, I don't know where it came from. They do say that the witch had something to do with this, but between us, I don't believe it. I don't think, hmm. I don't think she was involved. Have, has he met the witch before? Does he know her? I do not know the witch personally, in truth, but. Do you I think know the maiden? I do. She. Oh. She and I were very close once. Francine, her name is. Francine Marchand. She and I were to be wed. Uh, were to be wed? Well, I was going to propose to her. <laughs> Within the tower, and? it was going to be very romantic. But, well, then she disappeared one day and into this tower, and I hadn't seen her since. But you know she's there. I believe she is there, yes. She must be. First thing, we should get the letter to the Duke of, to the Camberlengo. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, I can, I'm Enough happy to write a letter if you need, or if you want to as well. Um, I have the stuff to write a letter, so we can send it to him how, from us four. But of how about LeBlanc, how about you sign it? So that way he knows. Yes, but of course. Year. I'd be happy to. Okay. So if we just write a letter to Raphael saying that we found LeBlanc, he's oh like he's he's doing okay, but he hasn't managed to save the maiden just yet. And we'll get LeBlanc to sign it. Okay, he does. And then it will magically be posted. <laughs> Where do we yes. post it? You deliver it to the Josephine, or uh, I guess the tavern owner here at the um, Bushy Tail, Armand, and um, he will send it out to via postage. Yeah, I want to okay. ask him. About, I want to ask him about Josephine. Yes. Like, how does he know her? What does he think of her? Just what their relationship is? Uh, she is a very kind woman. Everybody here in 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 this town are very kind. We've never really had any issues. Right, LeBlanc, well, how, how did this happen to you? Did you try to climb the tower? I did indeed try to climb the tower, and that is when the hair whipped me, and I fell. 
How high did you get? Well, I got right up to the window. Uh, it looked like it might have been the third floor. Did you see anything inside? I saw the tendril of hair that came striking at me, and that was the last thing I saw. <clears throat> anybody got any? Anybody in the town have black hair? My fair maiden did. Huh. Maybe she's having a bad hair day. <laughs> Just didn't want you to see. Did he appreciate that pun? <laughs> <laughs> he laughs gallantly. Oh, oh he's that. in a good mood. Okay. Yes, he's. I am just happy to be alive. Just to... the broken jaw. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. He is concussed. That's true. <laughs> Fucking delirious. It hurts for him to laugh, but he laughs nonetheless. I cannot. I cannot believe Leviota sends such wonderful people on my behalf. <laughs> He's ready to just put you all to work. <laughs> well, I, shall, well, I shall remain here <laughs> while, well, you, while you go on my night's quest. <laughs> what do you feel we should do? What would you do next if you weren't so fucked up? <laughs> <coughs> I would, I think, I genuinely think that the witch might be able to help you all. That door, that blasted door, I... I wasn't able to open it to myself. I wouldn't recommend the window, and I wouldn't recommend the trap door underneath, because it's not... not pleasant. But... if... she could perhaps give you something, a means to open the door, then you can just uh, climb to the tower. We've heard okay. she's got some pamphers. Oh, so yes. how do you recommend... <laughs> We speak well, to her without getting mauled. As long as you don't say anything offensive. Most people look at her like she is a old hag and treat her disrespectfully. But I think as long as you approach as a valiant knight, like does I she appreciate Does she appreciate puns? I, I'm unsure. Is she humorous in any I, way? She is a witch. You never met the woman. <laughs> All right, Austin, maybe, maybe leave the talking to us. Hold back those jokes. Oh, come on. I'm already going to bring her cats some, some food. We'll oh, that may be good. Maybe they like it. All right. <coughs> Jennifer, get that letter out. And the letter's okay. gone. So oh, that, that was quick. You all uh, send the letter out. You, uh, he, you know... He he actually does say, oh, I would love to join you. He kind of, a little excusey, like, I would love to join you, but my jaw and my concussion and the doctor says I should stay here. And uh, so I wish you all the best. And again, my father, he will pay handsomely for this this job. Um, mm -hmm. And he will pay even more because I am alive. And so uh, he uh, sends you all on your way. Um, you head out back okay, on. Before, yes. we leave him in the back room? We leave him in the back room. Yes, with the doctor. Okay, as I go by the bartender, can I say, uh, nobleman in the back wanted me to start a tab for him. Uh, can I get a <laughs> bottle of brandy? <laughs> and she does, or he does give you um, a bottle and opens it up on LeBlanc's tab. Thank you. And you now have brandy to go. So the lot, the lot of you uh, head back on the path um, and go around to uh, a small um, kind of off the path. You see a <laughs> hut in the distance, and it does look like what's been described after asking in the taverns. This is likely the hut of the Witch of Lynx Crag. And as you approach... You look up, and of course, you do see two panthers in the trees. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Chomping on a poor Nilfgaardian soldier. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! And. Poor guy. Uh, they look down at you, but they don't. They they look pretty appetized right now, so they don't do, they don't do anything. Okay. Um, 
Lavinia's going to use her 14 courage to just go over. <laughs> <laughs> what? Aww. What? So you begin to approach. You walk. I up. mean, like cautiously, but like you walk. I trying not to. Back. Having having like I think an air of just like don't don't mess with me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I would say. Roll me leadership or dear God. <laughs> or performance. Uh, or what about, what about intimidation or courage? Intimidation is scary music come from. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever if you feel that there might be something that you would roll for this, I would say intimidation could work too. Whatever you feel is your like mood walking up to this. Okay. Yeah, I like Lavinia wants to be a bigger cat than these panthers. Okay. Kind of thing. Yeah. Let's let's see. Twenty one. Okay. What was that? Intimidation. Word. Yeah, that was intimidation. <laughs> So I think I will I would follow suit. I would kind of stick with Lavinia. Okay. Um I'm hanging so back. Shall I do an intimidation also? Yes, or if there's some other if you wanna like some other means that you go. Okay. Intimidation also. Okay. The two of you approach um while the men stay behind and um <laughs> you, you uh you both walk very confidently and that does show the Panthers do not approach. They lick their their chops, at, um, but they do not uh, approach you. Um, and as you walk toward the hut, I follow them. Okay. <laughs> in their wake, I here. catch back up. <laughs> okay, you don't have to roll for this because they rolled well. Um, and you do see a woman approaching you. Oh, she's hey scary! <laughs> Damn. She asks you all, why have you come here? Uh, Lavinia will give a little bit of a bow and say, we're here on behalf of... We're here on behalf of... Um... Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, we're we're here on nervous. behalf of... Well, because I now... Now I'm second guessing myself. Like, what? Like, how much should I tell her? Um, is the mm. kind of thing. Uh oh. So, um, we're here on behalf of. I'll just tell the truth. I think we're here on behalf of uh, LeBlanc, one of the one of the knights um, around who has been trying to rescue a maiden from from Roger's tower. Mm. He, we was found, um, we found him uh, quite injured at the bottom of the tower, and um, he's now back safely in, safely in town. Um, but as he can't continue his quest, we've come to explore for him. Hmm. Yes, the curse on the tower. Tell me, do you all think that I'm the one who did it? No. Nope. Mm -mm. Can, can I make a human perception roll on her? Yes. Is that, is that how that you works? Can. You can. You can. Is that like an insight check? Yes, it's like insight, yeah. I have nine human perceptions, so maybe I should roll that also? Yeah. Kind of like 15. Not really me. Eight, 28. Woo. 28 oh, also. Wow, 28, and that one's a crit. Damn. So. God damn it. The two of you. She. She speaks to you in an intimidating manner, but she doesn't seem hostile, like she's ri like toward you all. Um, and as you all say, like, no, no. Are, are you all telling the truth? Do you all believe that she isn't the one that did it? Or are you just saying whatever? Oh, no, I actually, I, I don't believe she did it. Yeah, I don't believe she did it, but I think she might be knowledgeable enough to know how we might be able to lift it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. I think she probably did do it, but at least knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One moment. She looks at you all. Well, 
you all think I didn't do it, that is... That is enough for me. I would be willing to help you with this curse. I can... I can give you some potions that will help unseal the door. In exchange, I only ask for a lock of hair from each of you. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> any but why? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I wanted to grab one of those bushy tails earlier and see if I could take it. Because I could have used it here. Hmm. Can we ask her why she wants yeah, it? Yeah, I'm asking why. Like, why? any reason? Oh. I have my reasons. Is. Does, does it have to do with the hair at the tower? Perhaps. Or perhaps not. Hmm. Do you want my help or not? What do the potions do exactly? How do we use them? They are a normal fire will not work on this hair. So if any of you have any means of lighting things on fire, don't expect it to work on this curse. But I do have some magical fire that if you pour on it, it will ignite this hair. And uh, that'll help us open the door? Yes, it should remove any of the trappings within the door and open up a seal for you to open it. A certain Francine Marchand didn't stop by here before, did she? Not many do stop by here. Oh, so, so this tower has hair around it, right? Indeed, yes. So you don't oh. know whose hair that may be? I am unsure. But I know that this curse, whatever it is, it lingers within that tower. I assume it has something to do with the hair. How long has this curse been active? Do you know? It seems now it's been a few weeks. Oh, that recently. Hmm. Do you have any idea who might have put the curse on the tower? A great evil. All right, so how about this? How about two of us give you some air? And then when we're done, other two will come back and give it to you. I require a lock from all four of you in order to help. <laughs> oh, we've been rude, haven't we? The panthers begin to ah! skulk a little bit. <laughs> I, we haven't asked your name. I am What's what your they. Name? I am what they call me. The Witch of Lynx well. Crag. I do not give out my true name that easily. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because I only can only remember one person at a time by that name, and my mother-in-law is by goes by the name of Witch. <laughs> so I can't really keep that name in my head for too long. I uh, have heard many sisters of mine called the same. <laughs> Must be a common uh, name. Mm. You, your name wouldn't be Marchand, would it? It is not. Okay. How uh, how great is the evil we're talking about put on that tower, by the way? Are we talking <laughs> mother-in-law evil, or are we talking, like, Satan? <laughs> I do not know. Lion-headed <laughs> spider? Or wild hunt? Lovely. I think it goes beyond many things that I have encountered. That is all I can say. Oh. 
Um, uh, Lavinia's going to ask if she knows anything about the butterflies in the tower. Mm, yes. Butterflies were something very beloved to many people in this town. They are beautiful, are they not? So many different colors and intricacies. She's very vague in a lot of her answers, as you all have been catching on. We forgot to ask LeBlanc about that butterfly, didn't we? Yeah, yep. we did. We didn't ask yeah. All right. Well, let's do that on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The tower's on the way back. <laughs> uh, what's like? All right. Uh, well, I guess, I guess we call for Locker here, and I cut off the hair <sighs> and throw it. No, I don't throw it. I just. Hit the <laughs> it just scatters. She reaches out her hand. It's covered in dirt. <laughs> And she takes it. Yeah, I like it. Drop it in. <sighs> the Panthers begin circling you all. Oh, I think I'll reluctantly... Don't give her the hair. Yeah. If the Lavinia hair... Will the... Yeah, Lavinia will do Get the that same. Meat beard or head? <laughs> <laughs> the beard. <laughs> Hands well over. Okay. So you all give over a lock of hair? Sure. Yes. 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 Okay. I feel like we're too trusting. <laughs> yes. no, we, we should not be doing this at all. She, <laughs> she hands you a potion of this like magical fire. Um, <sighs> and she instructs you that if you place it on the hair that's kind of in the cracks of the door, they should ignite and then reveal, like, a seal to allow you to open the door. <sighs> right, so, who's going to take charge of the potions? How, how big she, are the potions? How many are there, did you say? It was... uh, she gives you... Uh, she just gives you one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will take it, if y'all don't mind. Uh, and Go for it. it. And I'll put that in my secret pocket. Okay. Um, so you all receive this from the witch. She doesn't really talk much else or say much more. Um, and you all make your way out. Before we go, you, you have an outhouse? <laughs> I usually use the trees. Oh, good. All right, great. If you don't mind. Of course. Here. I'm going to go into the woods a little bit. Wait for me, everyone. I'm going to go to the woods. I'm going to unpack the meat. I'm going to drench it in brandy. Okay. And then I'm going to come back okay. out. And I'm going to feed that to the, to the panthers. You give the brandy to the panthers. Brand, brandy? The, uh, the, the soaked the meat. meat. Yeah. You give the meat to the no panthers. Rum ham. <laughs> she looks at you she stares well, I, I thought since you were going to help us out I might as well help you out with meal but yes thank you uh -huh. and she just stares at you uh -huh. oh I'm leaving <laughs> <laughs> um, do I'm you... backing away yeah <laughs> um Okay. Uh, she doesn't do anything else. Okay. Do you all leave? Yes, right. I no. guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do <clears throat> uh, we think the butterfly is that important to ask? Well, he... LeBlanc did mention it. Um, and we do have this little... Uh, Lavinia will pull out the little engraved butterfly. It must be important. So do you think we should go back and ask him about it again? Before going back to the tower? I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't hurt, but I feel like we don't have to either. I don't think we have to. Yeah. I will say I mean, he doesn't it, really have too much about the butterflies. Okay. Okay. It'll only take about five seconds. 
What is it? It's all right. Well, it's a butterfly. What? It's a butterfly. It's like it's, it's like an engraved. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hair clip or something like. It's a uh, it's a oh. real butterfly. It looks like it's like uh, yeah. petrified and sealed in oh. like a clear oh, kind glass, of right? yeah, yeah glass. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we still have that though. Yeah. Okay. Lavinia has it. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, to the tower. Yeah, back to the tower. Power. So the tower. you make your oh, way yeah. back to the tower with this new potion in tow. Do you uh, approach the front door and try to do what she instructed? Um, well, Jennifer, is there a way to check that this potion is what it says, what she said it was? Um, is there? Um, what skills could I look at? You could roll. There is a skill. Um, like, one of the craft skills, like, maybe alchemy? Oh. Or... Okay. Or even, like... Sp you could... Spell casting? I was gonna say, you could do spell casting to see if you can get the components of this and make sure that it is, like, the components to cast some sort of igni or fire spell. Okay, we'll do spell casting then. Oh, okay. basic roll or detailed roll? Oops, what did I just do? Oh no, I hit refresh. Oh no. <laughs> uh, oops, I just lost roll 20. Uh, so yeah, you could just do the basic roll for that, the spell casting roll. Okay. Oh yeah, it's gonna do like an attack roll. That's what it is, but. Woo. Yeah. Oh, 35, dang. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, one moment. I'm just going to restart the music since I restarted. Uh, so, yes, it does look like this is some sort of fire, uh, like magical fire. Um, and, yeah, it is what she says it is. <clears throat> okay. It's not Zeracanian okay. fire, is it? Because I already have a bottle of that. It is not Zeracanian fire, actually. It is, mm -hmm. like, a different magical fire. I'm just paranoid now that she has our hair. <laughs> I don't want yeah. to end up being the one in the tower. <laughs> yeah, for I knew sure. a woman who collected people's toenails. Huh. Yeah. Was that your mother-in-law? <laughs> no. no. Yeah, it just seems coincidental that this hair is apparently the maiden's, which has all hair. So, whatever. All right, I'm, I hold the potion. I'm about to smash it on the door. Okay. Um, just and roll. No Roll me. Roll me like some sort of dexterity. Like it could Ooh, be athletics, maybe, or just the dex. Or uh, no, I would say roll me athletics or okay. Ooh, that's better. Or sleight of hand, even though it's uh, not sleight of hand is yeah. Even though it's not stealthy, I just just to see how you maneuver this. Okay. Nice. You are able to uh, toss this potion on the door. You see that, like the hair that's been kind of that is kind of in the cracks. And as you do, sure enough, it does begin to ignite. But the fire doesn't spread. Um, it sticks to the hair itself and kind of lights all of the hair on fire. And the hair does begin to crumble. And it does reveal that the door has hinges and a actual. Uh, so you're able to actually open it now. Um, as the hair fades away. All right. Well, I guess Let's we go. go in. Okay. Yep. All right. You all open this big stone door and enter into Roger Tower. Nobody Leroy Jenkins did. Leroy. Lucy just. <laughs> so. Luda. You are all going to have tokens now. Um. If I can place them on the thing, why isn't it working? Uh, Chicken. So are, I don't know if you guys are able to do this, but oh, your character sheet, if you gr like click the token and you drag it onto the map, does it do anything? <laughs> I can't see the map. Oh, really? I don't. Ooh. Scroll down. Oh, yeah. There's so there's actually oh, there's a fog down, of war. Yeah, that will be revealed. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I don't see my token. I do not see um, my token either. So, 
on the bio and info is that what you mean you yes. just drag if you go on your bio and info and see uh or actually on the sheet itself like where your name is and like if you drag mm -hmm. that onto the map i'm like why is this not oh uh, oh yeah there yeah, we go we're... there we go so yeah i gave you all uh the tokens of the characters uh for each of your roles within um Oh, within the sheet. Why is mine not working? Yeah, where? Oh, is this? Uh, so you go straight to from, uh, straight from the characters thing. Yeah. Oh, so, so yes, there you go. So if you go on the menu, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, how did I mine... just drag theirs on there? Here, I'll change your name to Jennifer. So mine think... doesn't work. And does it? Maybe oh. I'm dragging it from the wrong bit. Oh, someone else done it for me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. If you click on them, you can actually move them around. Too, I think. Represents Jennifer, Jennifer. Yeah, so if you Got click it. on it and drag, you should be able to move. So you all. Mine doesn't move very elegantly, just as an FYI. <laughs> it's the opposite direction where I'm trying to drag it to. Oh no. Let me see. So if I struggle. There you go. So Ooh, you that. all walk in, so I will go ahead and reveal this area. So you should be able to see and drag your tokens Ooh. in. And actually, okay, so we're in the tower and I. Yeah, and you actually all are a little big. So you should... Oh, shoot. Oh, I can't make you smaller. Oh, what off where you going, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's went down the, the stairs. What the fuck <laughs> is on the bed? What, no, what is that? It's a couch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what There's is that? person. <laughs> okay, I can't make you all smaller, which is unfortunate. I ain't going in there. You so you all are... Y'all are a little big for the area, but it's fine. Are there three people in here? It looks like it. So, as you walk in um, and you enter into the first floor, there's no light in here, so it's a little dark. Um, you aren't able to really see too well. Um, it's still kind of, it's, at this point of the day, it's more in the twilight, so it's starting to get mm. dark outside. So there's, there's no windows or anything um, in this first floor, so you can't really see much. Um, it's uh, you see these rotting figures still clad in uh, plate armor, posed uh, in lounge positions across these stained furniture, and then scattered across the floor are various scraps of torn paper, fragments of love letters, and other chivalric. Uh, correspondences. Uh, you do see two weapons on the floor and some other equipment from these knights. And you also see a mirror in the corner. I oh, want gosh. to be very stealthy. Okay. Um, just roll me a stealth check. Twenty-seven. Yeah, you are quiet. Um, so you guys see uh, Ludolf kind of snooping around already, and you're a little anxious at first, but you do see he's being as quiet as he can be, uh, looking around. Mm -hmm. um, could I investigate the weapons? Yes. Um, you look up, uh, or you look at the weapons, and you do see some Nilfgaardian greaves. Um, you see a great helm, and you see two, or you see a silver and a steel blade. Hmm. Um, and the letters that are scattered around, can we read any of them? Uh, yes. Reading the letters, um, you see they are written from, uh, a woman. Uh, her name as you're reading it, is Francine Marchand. And ah. she writes a letter to her love that she once, she looked at herself in the mirrors and she truly thought that no mirror could ever display how fine and beautiful her long hair is or was. And she wishes that there could be somebody that would appreciate her beautiful long hair. And she wishes that he could come, uh, her knight could come to rescue her. Can we go and look at the mirror? 
Yes, Jennifer, you look and you walk up to the mirror and just roll me a uh, awareness. Oh no. <laughs> Where is awareness? Top one, okay. You look and you thought you saw something in the mirror. A person, maybe? And I check around the room and that person's not in the room. You don't see them. And then you look back and you see your hair in the mirror is law or is kind of old and brittled. No. But then you look oh. down at your hair and it looks normal. But as you look at it in the Brit it looks scraggly, brittle, and old. Okay. Can I get can I tell everyone that that's happened? Can everyone be aware of that? <laughs> oh really? I'm gonna go look at the hair. Yeah, yeah do we all all, do we all crowd around the mirror like that SNL <laughs> sketch? <laughs> um Yes, roll me awareness checks, all of you. Okay. Oh, we used to have we used to have these all the time with the circus. Ludolf, uh, Lavinia, you have a similar, all three of you see a similar thing. You look and your hair looks brittle and frail. Do we only see our hair that way? Or if we're all crowded around the mirror, is everybody else's hair that way too when we look? Everybody's hair also looks like that. But then you look okay. at each other and your hair looks normal. <laughs> gotcha. Pretty funny. I uh, was like, is this prophetic or is this? Uh... <laughs> I'll investigate the steps over there. Uh, the steps. Uh, roll. Just actually roll me a. Um, roll me that that skill that you have as a criminal oh. to check for any traps. Or I think there actually is a trap checking. Skill. Yeah, it says this one here. Within ten minutes, ten meters of a trap, uh, I'll immediately make a practice paranoia roll. Yes, it, roll me that. Okay. And then it says nineteen. Okay. Um, you. Oh no, my desk, my standing desk is going up. Uh, I accidentally <laughs> hit the button. Uh. <laughs> you. Uh, you do not see any traps on the stairs. Um, the sta and they look pretty stable. Um, they look like st uh, wooden stairs. A little old, but they look stable. What do... What's as far as I see wh where they go? You see they kind of spiral upward to a second floor, but you can't really see what's up on the second floor. Okay. Well, we, we had heard that there might be something on the third floor, right? From LeBlanc? Yeah. We got knocked off. Yeah, that's where yeah. he got whipped out by the hair. Yeah, I, I say we go up. Is there anything else? I think we covered everything. We checked all the bodies. Um, yeah. we haven't checked the bodies actually. Oh, oh okay. Then yeah, let's check <laughs> the bodies. Um, they. So you, you don't see much on the bodies. Um, one of them has five Nilfgaardian florins. One of them has a flask with a little bit of booze in it. Um, but yeah, they also just have their armor, the helm, um, and yeah, a couple of weapons. I take those florins. Okay. Take five florins. Yoink. <laughs> you do notice, I will say the other thing, since you guys rolled pretty well in here, um, you do notice that there is, uh, under the rug, a trap door. Uh, that descends Ooh. to the caves, which you do remember the um, the witch had mentioned, or not the witch, but uh, LeBlanc. the knight LeBlanc had mentioned that there was a entrance here, but mm -hmm. it was uh, there was a bunch of Andrega uh, in the caverns underneath, so it's bad news. Yeah, we don't want to go down there. So, do you think we should try going up towards the third floor? 
Uh, I I suppose so. Okay. So you all head up to the second floor, and let me make sure I reveal the right floor here. Yes. Okay. So let me just reveal this really quick. Um, the second, the next floor. One moment. Um, that. And reveal area. So if you guys want to drag your tokens to this next little circle I revealed. Yes, yeah, so you would enter from there. Make sure this is all good. Okay, you should be able to see everything. So, the second floor... Um, you see there is some ambient light um, in this room, so it's a bit more visible than the floor below, and you see this black hair writhing along the ceiling of the floor, and you see there's a couple of rooms, but they're all, again, writhed with all of this hair. You see there are two suits of plate armor uh, in this hallway here, with two-handed uh, gledif, gledif, gledif swords, and you see stairs that lead to the third floor, and yeah, and then a hallway with a couple of rooms here. But I'll check out the hallway. I'm still stealth, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll check out the hallway in those suits of armor. So the suits just look like they're kind of standing there in a, um, like a standing position and they're holding, they're each holding a blade. Oh my God, are they filled with hair? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the fact that they're standing there. <laughs> As you approach, Ludolf, it does look like there's hair ta around them, kind of tangling around them. Can I like open a visor? Is there a visor? <laughs> Do you want to try to open it? Do you want to try to yeah. <laughs> you jump and scare in the horror? Okay. Film. <laughs> I'm not endorse this action. <laughs> <laughs> My GM's go like, Do you want to? You want to open it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a vo voice in my head told me about hair, Lavernia, La Lavernia. Uh, Lavinia's voice told me about the hair. All right. Uh, do I do like sleight of hand or? Uh, yes. If you want to do it stealthily, roll me a sleight of hand. Okay. Okay. Two sim. You do Thanks. open and you see inside hair. Oh, all dear God. <laughs> inside. Oh. Oh, Lavinia. I, I right. said that as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> no, no, I hate that. I hate that so much. <laughs> um, this is probably not another good thing either. I want to take some of this hair. <laughs> okay, how do you want to take it? Do you want to just cut it? Yes. Just like a little strand. Um... Roll me. Melee, small blades. You can roll me small blades. Uh-oh. Well, where do I do? <laughs> it's under reflex. Oh, okay. Reflex. So I think it might come melee. up like it's an attack. Oh, small so blades. I see Yeah, it. so it, it might give you a good you number, one... at least. Okay. Wait, did I just... Or, nope, you didn't. So it gives you, like, a bunch of options, because technically that's, like, your attack. Oh, Oh, I see it. Um, so if you want to I... do like strong melee, that will be strong strike. Or yeah, strong strike. Okay, fast strike, strong strike, special move. Okay, strong strike. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's like a whole bunch of stuff I'm just hitting submit on. Yes, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Twenty six. Um, you do cut the hair and you take some, but as you do that, the hair begins to move. No. In anger. And you these two armors begin <gasps> to move at you. <laughs> As the hair animates these marionette armors, 
You see, uh, it looks like. Um, one moment. I have an image Uh-oh. of this. It looks so like- I'm like next to it then. Oh, oh that looks like horrible. this. <laughs> hey, Pat. And. <laughs> Love it. All right. They begin to. Uh, everybody roll initiative. Oh. Initiative. Oh, the music's changed. <laughs> Where's initiative, please? Um, it should be on the quick right. Quick roll buttons. Yes, quick roll buttons with your stats skills and skills. Modifier. Yeah, yeah, skills and modifier. Oh. Sorry, man, was the wrong one. That was a save roll. Oh, good. At least I get to go first. So, <laughs> we have Lou. <laughs> Jennifer. Austin. Oh, no, Lavinia. And then Austin. Um, oh boy. Let's go. Okay. Oh no, Alston. So, um. <laughs> oh, keep on back. Da, da, da. Uh, Ludolf, you go first as you see these armors you begin to move toward you. <laughs> um, I know we talked about like, that combat earlier, and I might just be overthinking it, but I feel like. Oh, the attack yes. doesn't matter, right? Because if yeah. I'm looking at it, I'm like, I should cut the hair instead of actually attacking, like, plate armor. 100%. So, yes. Yeah. Um, Does when that matter? You, when you roll to hit, um, okay. it tells you, like, where... It, like, asks where you want, like, the little prompts that come up. Um, it should ask... Determine the location. Okay, so I'm doing the small blades again? Yes. So, if you hit your small blades... It'll say, determine the location. I would say that the hair is the head, so I would okay. hit head. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Actually, the head is a harder strike, um, but if you do, it, you have to roll a one. But if you do hit, you do yeah. really get okay. damage. Is it like the fast strike, strong strike? Does that matter? I mean, so the does, fast strike but... is... Um, Seems like I should do that for small blades. Yes, yes. Okay, we'll do that. So extra it could action. basically roll them. twice. So extra action. Oh, I gotta do twice? Yes. Uh, so it's it, not extra action. No. Okay. Weapon selection, the point yard. Yes. First attack location, head. Head, yeah. Attack mods, no mods, right? Well, I was just gonna say, I have a spell which can heat weapons to give a damage bonus of plus two and a 50% chance to ignite the target. Um, yes, which you could probably, you could do on your turn. <laughs> okay, I wasn't, sure if, I, do I have, do I, I wasn't sure if I had weapons or not, if I had to use my magic on somebody else's you, weapon. You do, you, the only weapon you have is a staff. Um, it doesn't do oh, a lot okay. of damage, but you, you could use magic or your staff. Okay, I wasn't sure if I had to use that spell on somebody else's sword. Oh, second attack, I see it hit. I got you. All right. Boom, boom, 25, 23. Okay. Ooh. 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 Okay, you do hit. Um, and now I think you can roll damage, which I think if you click the blade um, on your character sheet, uh, so you'll see that little quick um, quick button weapons if you hit Pony R. Oh, yes. I okay. think that should show there it damage. Goes. Five. Five. Um, okay. So that actually does do enough damage. Um, these don't have a lot of hit points. Uh, and it does knock out the first, uh, since you were going for the hair, um, yeah. the hair kind of falls and the entire armor just kind of crumples down to the ground. Um, and you take out the first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it is dead. <laughs> uh, Woo! Next, I started it. <laughs> next up is Jennifer. Okay. So you can so. do, yeah, You if you want to do magic, you can use them, one of your spells. Um, yeah, some of them do have, like, a buff to mm. them. Um, so with magic, basically, you use stamina to um, attack. And I think you have, like, 25 or 35 stamina. So you basically... So where is that? So when you look at your sheet... Um, yeah. You'll see at the top right, you have HP and STA, S-T-A. The, yep. the, that's yep. your stamina. Um, so you just okay. have to subtract from that. Um, it, it should say for each of your spells how much stamina it costs. Right, okay. The so only issue is, want... uh, one other thing I'll say is if 
once you're at zero stamina, you basically pass out. So you, oh. you're expending your own energy to cast these spells. So you just don't want to get to zero. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, could I try without using my magic? Yes, you could try to also just attack with the staff. Okay, how do I use that? So, uh, what I'll have you do is on your skills and modifiers, you can yeah. roll, um, I think it would be melee. It should be under reflex. Or actually, no, staff spear. There's a staff spear under reflex. Oh, yeah. Roll that, and uh, it'll do the same thing that it did for Brett. So it says like which type of attack. So you okay, could do, so I would do... You could do fast melee or strong, or fast strike okay. or strong strike. I think it'd be fast, and then no extra action? No extra action. Um, and then weapon selection staff. Yes. First attack location. Do we want to try and go for the head again? So you can. To get rid of the hair. Uh, it does... So the head is... The only thing is it's harder to hit, so it, it could be a less... Um, like a penalty on that, or you okay. could, but yeah, you could try to hit, go for the head. I'm gonna go for the head. Okay. And then, first attack mods, nothing. Second attack, um, just go for the head again, I guess? Yeah, you could try to go for the head yeah. again. Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh god, Ooh, what does that mean? The first, okay. Oh. Actually, uh, I don't think, uh, let me just roll. So the first one definitely doesn't hit, it's a fumble, it's a crit fail. Um, Oh shit! And the second one oh, also no. doesn't hit. Um, so oh, you no. you guys watch Jennifer kind of go with her staff. She has like a long mage staff, and she tries to swat at it from a distance, trying to keep her distance a little bit. Um, but it uh, they both miss uh, completely, um, and the hair begins to writhe and move toward her. Uh, and that is your turn. Uh, next up is Lavinia. Okay, so I'll make fast strikes. Um, my side. Sure, I'll use a battle axe. Uh, and I'll also go for the head for both okay. of these. Um, oh, 47 and a nice. Holy crit. 47 and 36, oh both crit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, 10, Lavinia. 10, 7, 10, 6. <laughs> Lavinia walks up. Oh, Did she just destroy the tower? She wants to save me. <laughs> <laughs> walks past Jennifer and just absolutely with her battle axe hacks into these uh, into the hair and like kind of breaking the seam as you see they're from the ceiling and it's almost like a marionette um, you cut it right off and the hair all falls limp as well does the armor completely crashing to the ground and uh, both of these armors in front of you they they're they're dead and you guys are out of combat. Woohoo! Woo the hair. The Battle of Brana did me good. <laughs> you do, you can keep the hair if you want. I am. Okay. 100%. But <laughs> you did. It. Okay. All right. Is there, is there anything else you want to investigate on this floor? Now that. Are there, there any another other mirror? Like, Should we see the mirrors? mirror? Yeah. 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 You do see another mirror in one of these rooms. Rooms. Um, okay. And upon investigating it, roll me another awareness, all of you who want to look at the mirror. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. 18. Twenty-three, eighteen, sixteen, twenty-three. Um, everybody except Alston. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Can't. I can't see it. Be too little. <laughs> too little. You see this a similar thing. Your hair looks brittle. This time it looks darker, like black. And for a second, you feel like the hair is crawling up your sides. And you look, but you see it, you look at yourselves, you look fine. You look in the mirror, you see this dark, brittle hair, and some of it looks like it's creeping on the floor, heading towards you. But then you turn and look, and it doesn't move. Weird. Oh, I don't like it. No, I don't either. What happens if we break all the mirrors? That's exactly what I was thinking. Smash. Mm. <laughs> 
Either the curse is going to get out or we fix it. <laughs> I'll just this stick the cutting here. All right. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep breaking the mirrors in the back of my mind. Um, it's an idea, yeah. Okay. Do you all want to head up the stairs? There's nothing else. Like we would Are there around. like any more letters or? It doesn't look like there's no. much in here. You don't see any letters. You see the beds, like you see um, some dressers with clothes, um, but nothing of major significance here. I wonder why was... there were so many beds. Do we know what the tower was used for before? Was it just like a siege tower kind of thing or? It does seem like it was a siege tower at some point. Okay. From your man at arms experience. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> third floor. So you yeah. all ascend level three. to level three. Uh, and let me reveal that. Okay. Ooh. So in this room, gotcha. you see um, a very immense dining room with an impressive long table that seats probably like 15 people. Uh, it almost, uh, you notice this, Jennifer, this table would not have been able to be brought in here by through the main door or through any of the windows. Like, there must have been some sort of magic use to bring this table in here. Okay. Um, and unlike the other floors, this one is lined with windows, one of which you do know has been kind of, like, damaged a little bit where our knight was trying to climb. And strangely, the table is set for, like, a fancy dinner party. You see silverware, plating, two bottles of uh, Chateau Conrad Cabernet. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, it looks, it looks pretty nice. Is that a broken mirror? Oh, yeah, at the bottom. Is that a broken mirror? Or is that the broken window? That is the broken window, actually. Oh, okay. And it's, wait, it's broken from the outside uh, as if he was trying to get in. Yeah, like he was trying to get in. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. While I scan around, I really check to see if there's any s dust on that table. <laughs> yeah, roll me a <coughs> perception, or not perception, sorry, awareness. awareness. Yes. Ooh. 19. 19. You don't see any wine, but you do see very thin strands of hair. Or you don't see any Edis. 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 Are there, it, Edis. Edis. Are there any um, armored knights? Any bodies of, you don't see, of armor? You don't see any knights. I've got my hair, though. Um, is, is the food that's here... Like, could you tell us about that? Like, is it actually fresh? Is it, like, moldy? Like, it's been here for weeks, or...? It looks edible. It doesn't look moldy. It looks fresh. Weird. Um... I don't know. This is freaking me out. I feel like we just keep going. <laughs> you know, how you said I could tell that there was magic uses. Is, is there anything I can do to like figure out what magic was used or when or any more detail on the magic roll me um i'm just looking here i would say deduction okay yeah roll me deduction 22 you do notice so ludolf had noticed these very thin strands of hair and you're looking at it those thin strands of hair look like they could be magical traps. Oh, Ooh, so don't touch it. <laughs> They're all lined across the table. Okay, so we'll stay away from the table. But there's no way of, like, deactivating magic traps or you, in a safe way. You do, you are familiar, both you or Ludolf could probably disarm the traps um, if you wanted to, to give that an attempt. It might be a little difficult because they are magical traps and not just regular traps, but uh, yeah. you would be, if you wanted to attempt to, you could. Do we need to, or can we, get, can we just get around the table easily enough? 
it looks like they do actually kind of go out on the table into the wall. So, like, if you wanted to get around, you would have to disarm them. Um, what was I gonna, I was gonna ask something. Oh, um, could, could I check to see if there are, like, any footprints or tracks through, uh, that are going through and around these tracks? Yeah, roll me a wilderness survival. I don't know if this is really wilderness. Ha <laughs> it's Ooh. a fail. <laughs> oh. Yo. Oh, no. Fumbled oh, by. No. You are not able to discern anything, no. Okay. Right. Well. Ooh. I have no skills when it comes to disarming things, so I'll leave it up to you guys. Okay, so where yeah. do I look for this? I'm so, not going to disarm. Um, there is a trap crafting. Okay, mine's zero. What's that under? Oh, I see. Craft. 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 Yeah, I'm not trying to disarm anything. So you could attempt to try to dodge them if you wanted to. Like, you do see, like, you could crawl under the way... They're, like, up on the table, and they kind of string out, like, two very thin strands. So you could try oh, to so jump over we, them. You could try to... Oh, we can't walk by the them. table. Yeah, so basically you saying. can't walk past the table because they're, like, yeah, oh, there's tripwire trip hairs. Um, um, I I would be game for seeing if we can dodge them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I have an okay dodge. <laughs> Where is dodge? Dodge escape uh, it's under reflex. Under reflex. Yeah. I have none. I have zero I have dodge. 13. I have a 13. <laughs> I will um, try. I have a two. I can Tra try. Crap, crap. Trap crafting. If all we right, all got to okay. do it. I got an eight dodge. Okay. Nice. All right. So be... You could try to dodge and could try to disarm. Yeah. 25. Okay. You nice. do successfully so crawl under. I I have zero dodge and zero trap crafting. What am I All good at? Then are you dodging? <laughs> no, I don't think I am. <laughs> All right, then here goes. I'll try to <clears throat> disarm the trap. Okay. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Nice. That's Ooh, that's a ten. That's a ten. So that's technically a crit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steady hand. So <laughs> you are, uh, yes, you are. You're able to disarm the two at the top here. Um, so they are. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so they are removed, and you are able to safely cross. Is that for all of us? Yes. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Lavinia was already waiting on the other side, but the huh. uh, the three of you uh, <laughs> make your way over. Did the crawl. Um, I guess, can we just check out the broken... Did somebody already check out the broken window? Um, uh, well, we know it was broken from the outside maybe. in by LeBlanc. Yeah, but just check and see if there's anything there dropped. Well, there the are there the traps on the other side, or...? Were those also disarmed? The those were not actually. I should say those those traps are still there. Um, so I would as yeah. I would assume. Does I would assume yeah. that he would have triggered those traps? Oh. I guess I said. I assume that the traps <laughs> were yeah. triggered by. Hmm. What's okay. Nuts? LeBlanc. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Looking, you don't really see much at this window other than, yeah, it's like it was crashed in. Like, he tried to get in. There was a, a struggle, and then he fell out. All right. Okay. Uh, do you all to ascend to the next floor? Let go. I okay. guess so. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. We're at a room here, so. Okay. So. Uh, I just revealed an area oh. in the bottom left. Boss Arena? Oh, no. Um, so, <laughs> as boss you, arena? you make oh. your way to the fourth floor, and you see this elaborate showroom. 
populated by glass-fronted mahogany cabinets lined with cork. And inside each is a treasure trove of pristine pinned butterflies, some as colorful as peacock feathers, some as large as your head. Others sporting fabulous patterns that dizzy the eye. The room is quiet, peaceful. Damn it, we should have asked him how he got one of these. Yeah, is there uh-huh. a missing one? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> you do notice one missing, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this, um, the tower sure. is, is lit by this chandelier and kind of gives this bluish glow. Should we put it back? Yeah, that's the question. Should we put it back or should we put it back? Um, I mean, we could. Also, yay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see what happens if we put the. Is there? Wait, are there any like? Is there any hair on this floor before we do any, touch anything? It does look pretty pristine. Okay. So I guess we can put the butterfly back. Butterfly. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Uh, who puts the butterfly back? Oh fuck! Oh. <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> Lavinia, cause she had it. Lavinia, you uh, yes. put the butterfly back in the uh, the show piece, and as mm. you do, you look at these like glass. Um, all the glass displays, and you see, again, your reflection. You see your hair looking somewhat crumbled and faded. And then you see, again, a person. But this time, you all see it. A man. (laughs) A merchant. Standing at the doorway. Uh... Do I recognize him? Leading up to the next floor, yes, you recognize him as that merchant who looks at you all. (laughs) And he says, so, you've made it in. Very well done. Hey, buddy. (laughs) Hey, buddy. I want to let you know that upstairs is, in fact, the maiden. And she is not who she once was. She was put under a curse. I don't know if it's possible to save her, but perhaps if you all wanted to make a deal, I could help you. What are what are your terms? One of you, one of you stay with me, or you walk away and leave this curse as is. You don't like cure this maiden. (laughs) You just walk away and continue on. You tell the Ducal that you weren't able to help her. And you continue on your merry way. Otherwise, <coughs> you may all die here. Are you like, are you like some kind of hair demon? You made of hair. <laughs> this whole place is made of hair. I am not, but, and then the hair starts to slither down the <laughs> stairs slowly. She certainly is. What's this maiden to you? What's this curse to you? Hmm. Well, she and I have a bit of a history. Let's leave it at that. Does Um, he not want to help her? Does he want to help her? Or does he want her to stay as this fairy monster? Can I intimidate him? (laughs) What, what, did she dump you? (laughs) If you want to uh, intimidate... um, I would... I would like to help as well. Okay. You all try to walk we, toward him. All of us. Oh, a 28. 
Where'd it's, it go? Oh, there it is. It's four to one. So you all... Out of ten. With a 28. Wait, where is Intimidate? Uh, uh, it's on the bottom. Yes. Under Will. Will. Okay. You all try to... <laughs> I don't think it's going to do anything. Okay. <laughs> he seems unfazed. He's a hair demon. As the hair <laughs> continues to move towards you all. And now it even starts to get at the bottom of your feet. Oh, no. All right. The um, deal is up. Walk away now. Or Okay. Die. Let's, okay. Hold on. Let's check our options, all right? <laughs> we could walk away, or we could stay with you. I mean, any of us? Not just these two, right? It could be any of us. One of you could stay if you wanted. Yes, that would be... What are the terms of staying? Like staying with you in the tower forever, or staying with you on the road forever, um, or staying with you for the duration that everybody else is here? Staying or... in the tower, taking her place. Uh, taking oh. her place. Well, why was... What does that mean? Well, if you go upstairs, you can see for yourself. Is it? it does this demon need like a host body? Oh, it's so grim. Perhaps. Well, I mean, <laughs> how softly can I say this? I mean, we could just like make him the host, no? Like. <laughs> All right. Well, you could try. I feel like we've made our bed, and I uh, put my hand on my poniard, and <laughs> I am very clearly about to attack. Okay. No, it's very clear oh, in the next few on, hold seconds. On, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. just, just so we know, you're not made of that weird hair shit, right? I maybe, know. maybe not. All right, I'll take my chances anyway. I'm going to throw the Zeracanian fire at it. Oh okay. shit! Oh. All right. Oh. Okay. Well, you did it first. So, all right. All right. This is happening. Um, all right. So everybody, <laughs> roll initiative. But Alston is going to have a surprise round, as they call it. This is happening. Oof. That's not too bad, I guess. Initiative. Jenna, um, not Jenna. No. Did mine go Jenna. through? <laughs> Fuck! You? Yes, you got 13. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Oh, awesome. oh, one. oh, and he had the snake or surprise. Okay, let me write this down. Uh, check and see what y'all may have, because I've got, like, a venom I can coat my blade with. I only blade. have my fire spell. So Jennifer oh, okay. is first. Uh, ah! Let me write this down. Um, so the order is Jennifer. Then Lavinia. Ludolf is before me. Oh, or wait. oops. Ludolf is before yeah. you. So it's Jennifer, <laughs> Ludolf, Lavinia, and then Al uh, Alston. Um, one moment. I'm going to roll for... So they go in between um, Lavinia and Austin. So as you throw the Zeracanian fire, uh, can you uh, just click on it so it displays uh, what it does again? Because I forget. Uh, yeah. I think I wrote A it. A dose yeah. of Zeracanian fire. Uh, hold on. Oh my god, there's a lot here. <laughs> yes, I remember it was a lot. Um, the dose of Zeracanian fire immediately sets whatever it touches on fire. Throwing it as an athletics attack check Ooh, with okay. a range equal to your body times two. And the and it splatters in a two meter cone away from where it lands, lighting anyone and anything in that area on fire. Okay, so roll me the athletics attack. <sighs> All right, let's see. Athletics attack. Ooh. Um, uh, would it be joint attack or reposition? Re no, wait. Basic roll, single strike. Uh, I think it would be... Uh, does it have like the melee, like fast strike or strong? 
It has basic roll, single strike, joint attack, reposition. Single strike, maybe? That sounds right. Okay. Go well. uh, single strike. Extra action. No. Weapon selection. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. Hold on. Yeah, I know. It's so, <laughs> there's so much like random like things that you need to like add to the rolls. Wants me to choose a dagger or a short bow. Oh, okay. This is weird. I, I, I'm surprised it doesn't <laughs> just let you like attack. Wait, is it is this target location like uh, this? No. You know what? I'm gonna. What? I'm gonna. Ha just roll me in athletics. It, or is that what you clicked? Was it athletics? Try just rolling. Well, athletics. now I can just do a. I can do a basic. Athletics. Yeah, just roll me a basic athletics, and we'll see. Twenty-three. Yeah, Twenty-three. You. Nice. You do. Um, splash this area on fire. The merchant disappears. Oh. Weird. And the floor begins igniting on fire. Unfortunately, oh. the hair doesn't seem to be catching to the flame. Because it's not the magic fire. And it begins to grab you and... Well, actually, it doesn't grab you all, but it begins recoiling up the stairs. And you guys have a fire that's beginning to ignite in front of you. It's well, not... Sorry. It doesn't completely block the path, but... Um, it is lighting in front of you. That's a 20 year fire, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I guess, well, it's weird that the merchant is gone. Um, do we just run upstairs and see what the sitch is? Um, there's, that, there's that threat of one of us taking Levin, or one of us taking uh, Francine or Franz Jessica, what it was from mm -hmm. Francine's place. Francine. Yes. So. Okay. I mean, we can't stay here. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to go here. upstairs, I think, yeah, and just yes. see what this is. Okay. Right. Oh, no. So, <laughs> you all head up the stairs. <laughs> and as you do, you see in front of you a maiden. Her hair. Oh, oh long. No. Nope. And... She's covered in tattered clothing. Her ha her face is racked with fright. She looks at you all and she says, Help me. Help me. And as she does... She'll save the fire. <laughs> her, ha her hair begins to extend into six tendrils. Um, and I've I've used little map markers. They have these little these black dashes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's six of them. Two, three, four, five, six. And you all see in the center. You see this maiden. And with that, the tendrils will go to look like they are hostile to strike you all. But. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Jennifer. Yep. You are first. What would you like to do as you enter into this? Uh, did I reveal the whole area? Hold on. I think I might not have. Um, I can see it now. Okay, you can see it all. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what would you like to do as you enter this room, covered in hair? Um. Well, we she's right in the middle combat? of those. Yes, you're still in com okay, you're still okay. in combat. Okay. I guess I would try and cut through one some of these buyers to get to her because she seems like she's in distress now. She's not attacking us. Yes. She just needs help. Um, so, is there a way of cutting through one of these six things? You could uh, you could use one of your spells if there's something that you think might help. I don't know. Let me let me read some of these out. Or you could try your staff again, but I would recommend the spell if you have something. Yeah. So I have a fire spell which heats up weapons, but it's I don't know if this is going to be fire that will hmm. actually light the fire, light the hair, because it seems to be only that potion that she gave us that lights the hair. Yeah. It, um, it seems like regular fire doesn't have an effect. 
Yeah, other ones I have is the fog, which I talked about earlier, which just makes you won't be able to see anything. I have earth, which creates an angled stalagmite. So, I mean, that... I don't want to kill the woman. You also have... Um, or actually... So you could aim that at the hair itself and not necessarily her mm -hmm. because they are kind of like long tendrils, kind of like yeah. like spider legs. Like So you could okay, okay. try to attack one of those. Attack one of those with the earth magic? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if any of the other ones would be particularly useful in this situation. The other one is where I've got copies of myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, we'll try the earth <laughs> magic. Um... And that is going to be five stamina. So what do I need to do there? So you just need to subtract five from your existing stamina and roll okay. a click on the little fire thing because I think I have all the description of the spell on it. Um, so earth so magic. It okay. Earthen spike creates an aligned stalagmite within six meters of the caster. Stab the target despite this 5d6 damage and remains until destroyed. Doing tw Okay. So um, you... I have to roll... So I think you roll a spell casting, spell casting, which is under will. Yep. Um, um, roll basic that. or detailed? I would do basic. Yep. And that'll roll to see if you hit. Okay, 29, that's pretty good. I'm gonna roll to see okay. if it misses. So you uh, aim for one of the tendrils. I'm gonna say you aim for, oh, I'm not do this. Um, you aim for, ah, oh, why is this? You aim for the one right at the top here. Yep. Um, and that does hit. So you do Ooh. 19 damage to it. And let me just subtract it one second. Let me just do the math here. That is enough to take out this first one. Ooh. So I'm going to just freehand <laughs> this. This tendril begins <laughs> to wither away. Uh, this tendril of hair begins to wither away. Um, and next up is Ludolf. Can I get to her within melee range? You could get right up to her. I want to try and chloroform her. Oh. I have chloroform. <laughs> you try I thought that was around. a joke earlier. <laughs> no, I have chloroform. Okay. I want to try to knock her out. Okay. You crazy. Are you right. crazy? Um, I don't want to kill her. Okay, um, so the... You want to put in what it is? Yes, please. Because I think... I can't click on it, though. Any dose, uh, a dose of chloroform forces anyone to breathe it to make a save moderate penalty or be knocked unconscious. Every round they have conscious target. So I'm trying to see if this is poison. This is a melee attack with a cloth soaked in the chloroform. Because she is immune to poison. Ooh. So, uh. this, I don't think this is actually going to work. You can attempt, um, so go ahead and roll your attack. As you said, do you I were just, going to do this. Do I just do it with, like, the poniard? Yes, do it with the poniard, and then we'll, we would add the chloroform. Ooh. Uh, it's a one. <laughs> so, actually, roll me the melee attack roll. Um, oh, that's yes. on. Yes, because that would be the damage. Reflexes, melee. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, do I do anything? So you can just click Extra if you want. Action, no. Yeah, if you want to do the, yeah. Weapon, just the same, the poniard, yes. I guess? Yeah, the poniard. Yeah. And then head, it has to be head. Yes. Because I have to put it like, yeah. Uh, no attack monster. Oh, it's only one attack, right? Yes. Okay. Just so ask for a second one. Do I just hit cancel? Uh, just hit, just hit through and roll and take the first one. Yeah, yeah. God Ooh. damn it. Okay. <laughs> so you, oh. you do try to strike at her. Um, it does. Let me just roll really quick. Um, it does miss. Um, she looks at you, sad and in pain. Aww. Help. See? Hey. Me, help me. Um, and that is your turn, Lavinia. 
Um, so I'll do two fast attacks on the on the hair. Okay. Would I would I aim for head again, or? Um, you. So that's actually interesting because this isn't really a bo- a person humanoid. So I would yeah. say you don't have to aim for anything, so you don't get any of the penalties for trying to call okay. a shot. So just keep it random. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh! Wow. Twenty-one and thirty-two, but a critical fail. Yes. So it was. So the first one misses because it's a, f- mm-hmm. a critical fail, um, despite it being a twenty-one, which is really good. Um, and then the <laughs> second one does hit. Uh, so go ahead and roll your damage on the um, on the. It should be that little side bar or the. I forget what it's called. Hold on. Yes, that. <laughs> Which, uh, which is it? The uh, quick weapon? One? Yes, the quick weapon one. That's what it's called. Okay. Okay. 19. 19 damage. So you are. Let me just do. Okay, you are able to take down a second tendril with that oh. with that hit. So do we need to take down all six of these? I'm wondering. We don't know. <laughs> I've got 24 more doses. <laughs> and with that, it is the maiden's turn. She, in the center, doesn't do anything other than look at you in pain, Ludolf. But <laughs> the tendrils will go to strike each of you. Ah! So um, what we are going to do is... You all will have to roll. I'm going to roll to hit, and you have to roll to dodge. Okay. So that is going to be... I don't know where the dodge is on the character sheet. So you have to... If you want to go on the left, there's the little uh, icon with the dice. You're all going to roll a d10 and add your reflex. D. So you'll see um, on the little side bar, that gray side panel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so then you roll your d10, and then if you look at your character sheet... Um, reflex is yes, at the top the, there. Yeah, the reflex. Okay. Nine plus eight. Um, I have okay. a 13. 13. Okay, so I roll d10. Oh. I don't think plus. we're rolling dodge escape, Gary. Yeah, Gary. Is it not dodge? Oh, you know Plus what? No. I think it is, Nine. Gary. I think, actually, yeah. yes, you're right. That's what it is on the Damn game. it, Gary. Hey, Gary got <laughs> it. Um, so you rolled a 19. I just made everybody else do it manually, oh. which is... I rolled a 29. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh, shit. Mine's a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's zero as well. Okay, so... Oh, my God, mine's so bad. The tendrils oh. miss... Um... The reflex. Alston and Lavinia, you are safe. Dodge me with no. that. Fuck you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer and Ludolf, the tendril, two of the tendrils strike at you, and let me just see what it does with the hair whip is the name of the attack. It is. You both take seven. Or actually That's not you, too bad. you technically are supposed to subtract it from your armor. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, okay. So you, if you look at your character sheet. Yeah. Um, and if you go to gear and inventory, um, you'll see that little uh, armor person. Um, mm-hmm. That is how much uh, armor you have. So you would subtract oh. That's a lot. 7 from 12. And it might not actually even pierce you. You might not actually take damage. So you have 12, Ludolf. So 12 minus seven, it technically just hits into your armor um, and you don't take any damage. Oh, uh, so it, cause it shows numbers on my arms, but it doesn't have it grayed in. Um, I think technically you only have it on your chest. Chest, okay. Yes. I'll just take that. Too. I only have five. So it does oh. hit into you. Um, so that's the math. It is seven minus Uh-oh. five. Two. So you take two 
uh, damage from your Off my HP. HP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Yes. I can do that. 43. Okay. So, that's the Maiden's turn. Alston, you're next. Ooh. Well, this is uh, terrible. Uh... Is a dagger a slashing or a piercing weapon? That is, I believe, a piercing. Mm. A short bow is definitely piercing. Uh, that's my two weapons. Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll be brave. I'll approach and, uh, attack one. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's see. So you can roll your right. melee if you're using your dagger. Go, dagger, go. Um, so Oof. what you would do is you hit the... How is it zero? What the? <laughs> How do you roll less than one? Okay. Uh, I might not have put it in your character sheet correctly, but what you can do ah. is... Um, sure. Roll, uh, go in your skills and modifiers, um, okay. and roll melee. Um, so melee, it should be, you could do, I would do fast strikes because it's a dagger, and go ahead and roll that. Aha! Uh -huh. Wow, that's so you know, much. It's a lot of clicks, yeah. It'll be like, what do you want? Click, 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 click. Uh, 11, so let me just check. So the 11 misses, but the 13 does hit. Okay. Um, so you uh, would roll, try hitting the quick weapon buttons dagger on the right, um, and that should roll your damage. That should be the proper. What? Okay, um, I might have just put it in wrong. Uh, let's see how much, ammo, uh, how much a dagger does. One sec, I'm gonna look this up really quick. I think a dagger does, Either one or two d6. Oops, I got some dice here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, dagger. Uh, so roll me just uh, on the sidebar there. Roll me two d6. Okay. Uh, they do this. There we go. Okay. So eight. you do eight. Um, you do. Uh, uh, I don't know. Actually, I didn't feel that. So you do hit into it, and it does take some damage, but this tendril is still up. Um, and with ah. that, uh, we go back to the top of the round. Where'd my little initiative tracker go? I had a little note. Here it is. Uh, we are back to Jennifer. Okay. So, can I? do I have to keep attacking these separate things, or can we try and actually get to her? You could try to attack them separately. You could try to find a way to attack multiple at once. You, I guess you can discern what you want to do. If you want to try to attack her, you can. I'm more like, you remember the with the like um, armored ones, we just like cut the hair at the top. Mm. Can we just like cut her hair I off? I see. You could try to do that, yes. Um, I would say that that's like a call shot for the head. Um, okay. So when you roll through, if you want to attack, ooh, with magic, I'm not sure how that works. Um, so, so I don't want to attack her, I just kind of want to yes. cut the hair off so she kind of drops down. Um, so go ahead and, uh, do you want to use a, your spell again, the Earth's magic? Or do you want to um, do? I don't think so, because that would be like, I don't know, I feel like that would hurt her. Because it would come up from the ground, wouldn't it? I would say you could, you could try to aim it so that it doesn't hit okay. her, but it tries to hit just the hair. Okay. What do you guys so, do? You guys think are you guys okay with me trying that? Let's try that then. Okay. So roll your spell casting. Um, so under earth will. magic. I'll just put that in there again. Okay. Um, Is that what I was supposed to do? 
So roll, uh, so once you, that's how much damage you did if you hit. So what you do is go to the skills again. Um, and spell and then, casting. Yeah, the spell casting, yeah. Okay. Oh, Ooh. wow, okay. Um, that does hit. And then I take another five off my stamina. Yes, take five off your stamina. Okay. Um, and you are able to sever the hair, and with that roll, I would even say you actually sever these two pieces here. Um, oop, that's not what I want to do. Um, so you sever these two from her head. Ooh. And it looks like one is remaining. Um, and she, yeah, she, she still looks like she's in pain, though. Um, and yeah, that's your turn. So, Ludolf, you are next. So there's only one of them left? Uh, actually, sorry, two of them remaining. There's the one two. that Alston is attacking okay. and then this one that's been un attacked still. I don't feel like what we're doing is doing anything. Mm. But the only other option is <laughs> the chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> well, only two people got hit. We'll be okay. All right, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try to chloroform her. Okay. So melee. Yeah, so the melee uh, to do the attack. We'll do the same thing. Just do the first one, right? Yes. Go to the head. Okay. God. <laughs> not meant to be. It does not look like it's hitting her. Um... So yeah, you both you try to swing at her and it misses again with your chloroform blade. Um, Lavinia, you are up. I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, try to attack the remaining uh, the remaining hair. Okay. Like I say, you're gonna chloroform her too. <laughs> <laughs> or well, is. Actually, would I be also aiming for the head if I wanted to get her down? Yes, I would say you aim okay. for the head. Um, Let me. Yes, down. and be, okay. your battle axe, you would only be able to attack one of them, like one of the okay. tendrils of hair. Okay. But I'm gonna try aiming for the head in order to yes. see if I can get her down from there. Okay. Woo. 2539, the 39 Ooh. is crit success. Oh my gosh. Okay, go ahead and roll <laughs> your damage uh, for, the, for the those attacks. Uh, 22. Oh. Two, and, oh, then wait, you, and then you can roll your second one as well. Okay. 23. Dang. With the blue. With the blue. Lavinia freaking packing the punch. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, with this, as you strike again, you cut and sever her hair. The one in the back completely falls to the ground. And it actually does sever, and the only one tendril remains. It begins to kind of slither toward Alston um, in, its last, in its last bit of life that's left. And it, uh, on its turn, because its turn is next, uh -oh. it slams into the <laughs> ground and it tries to break the floor below you to try to okay. have you fall. Um, roll me, I'm just gonna actually roll. Oh shit. Okay, roll me just a evade, or the dodge evade to see if you can kind of move out of the way so uh, with the floor breaking below you. Nope. <gasps> Uh, so you, uh, you didn't, uh, Ludolf, you're good. Oh, it was just uh, him? Yeah, it was just Austin. Oh, okay. It was targeting. Um, and no. you are able to successfully dodge out of the way what? as this last tendril starts to creep towards you. And it is your turn. <laughs> the, uh, the maiden, she falls to the ground. What? She seems like she is unconscious. She looks like she's alive. But this piece of hair remains. I'll, I'll make I'll make two attacks against it. Okay, go ahead. That's right. That's right. All right, here we go. You attack and let me see. Um, the first one does hit. Uh, 
Okay. Um, roll me 2d6. Okay. Uh, so, Alston, you strike this tendril. It's like, it's like a, when you cut off, like, the, the, the tentacle something, and it's like still is alive and squirming, <laughs> and it's squirming yeah. towards you, but with your blade, you kind of just like stab into it one more time, and it falls limp to the ground. Oh and yeah, ooh. true hair of Gryffindor. <laughs> and all of the hair begins to slowly, oops, that's not what I want to do. MVP. Easy slowly though. fade and recoil away. And it moves backwards. But it's still crucially still alive. It actually starts to just disintegrate and oh. fall backward. Mm. And you see the maiden laying on the floor, her hair now brittle and frail, and just a few inches of it on her head as you all severed these tendrils of hair that were spawning from her. And they begin to vanish and crumple away. And no hair remains. That's good, right? Little Caillou over here. She lied. Um, you yeah. walk up to her, and she does seem alive. Um, for narrative purposes, I will say that you all kind of try to help her up. You try to stabilize her. And you eventually do. She looks at you all and... Are you are you here to save me? Y yes. I, I I can't believe it. She looks like in shock. Um, she looks frail, but she's alive. Does she look like a young what? maiden that just looks frail, or does she look old? She looks like a young maiden still. Okay. Yeah. Um. What What happened? How did this How did this happen? I. I was cursed. By who? I don't know his name. It was a man. He... He was... He came to me selling mirrors. <coughs> and... I just looked at him. And... I... told him that None of the mirrors would ever display my hair so beautifully. And because of that, he cursed me to this tower and cursed this hair upon me. And I was supposed to be with LeBlanc. He, he was supposed to rescue me. Where is he? Do you, do you know of him? He's alive, he's in town. He um he attempted to rescue you but was unsuccessful. Oh. But Always he's there. Like him too. We'll we'll take him. We'll take you to him. Thank you. I I can't thank you enough. And you realize that below you there is still a small fire. <laughs> 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 As she goes down, she says, My my father's collection. Please, you have to help me preserve it. Collect oh, the collection of butterflies? Yes. How do we get rid of that? There's no way to get rid of that fire. It's a 20 year fire forever. Fire, guys. <laughs> oh my god. Mage. Um, I know well, I don't have anything that can put on fire. We can at least I mean I have a shield if we want to just put the you shield could, on top of the fire. I will um everybody roll me a physique to see oh, how God. well you work together to put out this fire. <laughs> oh, I got a 26. Um, Alston, you, uh, you try to start putting out, part of your, uh, your um, cloak starts to get on fire a little bit from the Zeracanian no. fire. Um, you quickly <coughs> shake your arm I and put it out. I made my bed now, I'm a fly in it. <laughs> but the rest of you work together to put out the fire. It does minimal damage to this beautiful collection of butterflies and she is happy enough that her father's collection wasn't destroyed and you all 
take her out of the tower. It's you don't see any hair lingering um, at all. Oh. Did we break the mirrors on the way out, or do we just avoid them completely? You look, and the mirrors are broken. Oh. Oh. Okay. Is this, this gaunter? <laughs> and as you all walk back, and you reunite LeBlanc with Francine, he does propose Aww. to her. Lovely. He wanted to you propose are. in front of her bu father's butterfly collection, and he tells you that. But he's fine that he at least is able to reunite <laughs> with her. <laughs> he's he's a little disappointed he had a plan to do it in this beautiful butterfly collection, but um, he still thanks you all nonetheless and invites you to his wedding that's happening later in the year. And LeBlanc, LeBlanc uh, via his father, pays you all 1,000 florins Ooh. each. Each. Dang. Ooh, wow. If, it, if, if he had died, he would have only, you only would have got 500 florins, but you rescued him and her. Yes. Um, so you get 1,000 florins. And the two of them embrace and are very happy. And the four of you getting this job are very happy with your 1,000 florins. You begin to make your exit. Maybe you have a couple more drinks at the uh, at the bushy tail. You make your exit <laughs> from this beautiful little town in Toussaint. And you see, as you look back, you see the merchant one last time looking at you all. And he holds a spoon in his hand. Ah! And you see. No! A man changed his visage from a humble merchant to something a bit more menacing. As you all exit. Hopefully not to return to Fox Hollow. Yeah, I'm not coming back. I think you may find us. <laughs> the end! Oh, you did it! Yay. Good job, everybody! Yay! yay. Fun fact, yeah. it was Gaunter in the book itself. Like, I didn't make wow. that up. The curse actually was from Gaunter Odam. It's um, Gaunter. So, yeah. It was that, yeah. And then the when he showed up the merchant, I'm like, oh, shit, the mirrors. Merchants, the merchant, mirrors. Gosh, fucking Gaunter. Yep, 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 yep. Yes. Gaunter. Yes. I threw, I threw a fireball at him. Yes, How you did. Could... You did. That's why I was yeah. like, yeah, you're, I was like, oh, I, I liked the idea, but I was like, it wouldn't do anything to Gaunter. Did <laughs> I chloroform yeah. him? Um, I, I don't think it would have done anything to Gaunter. Would have evaded <laughs> He's, he, nothing would have done anything to Gaunter. But the maiden, mm -hmm. yes. Um, she was just a maiden who was cursed. And you did manage to destroy her hair. So good job, everybody. Did we Yay. miss is there anywhere we didn't go or anything we missed? Um, no, but so the book basically tells you like, the players should go right, like they settle in and then they go right to the tower to investigate. You guys are like, let's go to the winery and maybe we'll go to the witch. And it's like, you're supposed to find him unconscious there first. Quickly. And, yeah. then, oh. and then you kind of like rescue him and spend some time with him. And then, you know, but it was like, uh, you guys are like, let's investigate this place. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't really, ex I expected you guys to maybe just go to the tower first, but I guess Straight it kind of, tower. yeah, it makes sense that you might not want to go to the tower first. So yeah, that's something that I have to make note of. <laughs> would he have? Would you? If we were to dawdle too much, would he have just died, or did we have to like meet him? No, he probably would have just stayed unconscious. But so how would he have died? Like, they, so it does have like if he dies, then you do. Uh, yeah. So I guess so he, you could have asked him to come with in the tower and he could have potentially died uh, fighting in the tower. If we would have gone back, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So he like if. I guess I, I probably could have done it where he would be more like, I want to be a knight. I want to save my maiden. Yeah, and yeah. But I figured, I'm like, you know what? He's pretty beat up. You guys can just go. <laughs> does anything, you... um, does yeah. anything happen with the hair given to the witch? It doesn't say. Okay. Ooh, it's, a it's just to throw you off. Then. I, okay. I think it yeah. is to throw you off, but... I think I like to think that there's something that she does with it later on, like some sort of. Yeah, for, for yeah. An, it, it remains a mystery to the players. I thought yeah. that was gonna like 
come back to hurt. Like if we gave yeah. our hair, it would have hurt us in some way. Like yeah, I know. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. If she was involved, but I guess she actually wasn't involved. Yeah, I thought that might have been the exchange. Like if we, or like if every time we saw each other in the mirrors and it was like, we looked more and more. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I was like, is she doing something to do that to do? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it was the the art of that maiden is really creepy. That's in the book too. I was like, ooh, this is yeah. good. That's like, really cool. Yeah, I really yeah. like this whole like all of the artwork and stuff that they have for this particular. It's almost like the plague maiden. Mm -hmm. It looked like the plague maiden. Yeah, which is obviously yeah. Not the not the tongue. Yeah. Yeah, it reminded me so much Pest. of a tower full of mice, like yeah. from yeah. the game, yeah. like Pesta, going up the yes. tower. Yeah. yeah. That's in Peston. But yeah, that is our one shot, everybody. Thanks everybody in chat for hanging out. Thank you uh, for all of your support again. And thank you guys for playing like this. I, I know it's a little rough. The combat is a little, I'm still trying to get the hang of it. It is kind of a lot um, in comparison to like D&D. &D, so it takes a little bit of time to, to get used to. And I think as I play this more, we will be more seamless with it. But uh, I'm, I hope everybody enjoyed and thank you to my awesome players. It was players. great. You did thank so you, good, Tracy. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You're so good. Did it. I, they, I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. Um, real quick, we'll go down the line. Everybody, tell us where you can find you on the internets for people to follow you. Mm -hmm. Lucy. Um, so I am Lucy J. Robin on every single social media platform going. Um, you can find me on Twitch a few nights a week. And I'm also, I'll not forget this time, one half of the On The Path Witcher podcast, which is on YouTube and all podcasting platforms every Monday. Yeah, right. uh, the Fox, Fox Bride pretty much everywhere. And then, yeah, On The Path, which we had an episode of this where Gary right there yeah ran it mm -hmm. and everyone else kind of went on it and then we had i know we had Alyssa right there for one of the oh dear friend dear friend yes. for the dear friend episode on there so yeah uh check them out there as well and then yeah that's it thanks again tracy Yay, yeah thanks, thanks tracy Alyssa. Uh, um, yeah, so you can find me uh, hosting Breakfast in Beauclair, a global Witcher podcast. Um, you could find uh, all of the information for that at breakfastinbeauclair.com, um, at Breakfast in Beauclair on Instagram, Facebook, and at Beauclair Pod on Twitter. If you're interested in urban sketching around the world, around New York City, um, you could find me on Instagram at It's an Art Journal, I T S, an art journal. Yeah. So. Uh... And Gary. Well, you can find me uh, by Garrison Watts on Twitter or on Instagram. Shit, I am definitely shit posting as Twitter burns to the ground. Oh um, God, yeah. You can also find me on <laughs> it, it definitely in Brett's chat or on in the Hansa Discord, uh, and you can also find my D and D products on DMs Guild. So if you want to you know, support other DMs, there's also that. So yes, that's where I'm at. Um, thank you. For, yes. Uh, I'm playing today's game. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again, chat, for hanging out and all the people in the VOD who watch this later. We will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.